Marco. 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 Yes, 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 and yes. Thumbs up the team. Let's go. We're here again. <laughs> I gotta get the bag. And my uh, there we go. My light isn't working. Yes! Almost four full years of being a full-time YouTuber. And I swear to you, I'm not even making this up. Almost every time I stream, almost every time without fail, it's just some new shit that I have to deal with. When I, when I stream, that is. Either YouTube updates something where now it's different, I have to click some new thing, or... Uh, OBS is doing something or Stream Deck is doing something. In today's case, it's Stream Deck. Mind you, I haven't changed, unplugged, updated, rebooted anything. And uh, I have... My light isn't working. Let's see. We're going to need it to work because if it doesn't work, it's going to get dark very quickly. And that won't be good. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Yay, he got it working. Wow, he turned it off and turned it back on again. Yay, he did it. Yay. Marco. 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 There we go. You know. Do you like me? <laughs> Let's go. So that's good. So everybody, thumbs up the stream. Click like on the video. And let's boogie. First of all, I know your I know your first question. You you probably have two questions. The first one is, how come there's 108 people watching and only 45 likes? I wonder the same thing every single day, which is why I say thumbs up the stream. The next thing you're probably wondering is, Marco, and statistically, most of you watching this are in the future watching this on the replay. So hello to the future. Most of you are probably wondering, what the heck on earth is this dono goal up here? Now, you guys know I'm very committed to the anti-MLM movement. Uh, I've still been working on this big project that I've been working on since January. And I would say today and yesterday were the two most productive days I've had working on that video throughout the entire process. Like, a lot of it is just very tedious. You're watching hours and hours and hours of Zoom calls that you've recorded and that I've recorded and social media posts and YouTube videos posted by people in the company in order to get a full picture of what they're about and what you're gonna include in the video. So you have to watch all that, download that, bring it into the editing software, watch it again to like really go through and cut. Do that several times because you'll do multiple pass-throughs. I'll do multiple pass-throughs to see like, is this really important? Did another person say it? And then, uh, get to, you know, whittle it down to the most important stuff and then write out what I'm going to comment on each of the things. Anyways, today and yesterday, I probably made more progress on the video than I have in the past month. And every time I do a dono goal, like all the money I make from YouTube, obviously I have to keep my lights on and buy groceries and buy, you know, gas and things like that. But most of it goes back into doing this in some way or another. This time is different. This time is different, I gotta be honest. I just wanna be transparent. There is, there is, uh, there are several events coming up in uh, my city that I really wanna go to. There are movies coming out and there are concerts happening. I have not been to a concert since probably 2018, honestly. I was in the nightlife business from 2014 to 2018. I took a break for a couple years and then it was COVID. So then I took a break for another couple years. I haven't been to a concert for sure since 2018. My favorite artist of all time, 50 Cent, is coming to Edmonton in September and I will be damned if I do not go to that concert. Not only that, Nickelback. Thank you, Eliza. Yes, Eliza, <laughs> Eliza for mod. Yes, yes. Second of all, Nickelback is coming to Edmonton. And bro, what better event to wear my cowboy hat at than Nickelback? Hello? 
I'm through with standing in line, the clubs I'll never get in. It's like the bottom of the ninth, and I'm never gonna win. Dude, if we fill up this donut goal, off the top of my head, I'll perform the whole entire song, Rockstar by Nickelback. Look at this photograph. Different song. Not only that, the band KISS is coming to Edmonton. On their final tour. Now listen, people are always, people, whenever I tell them I'm a fan of KISS, they're always like, what the fuck, KISS? And I'm like, yeah. Honestly, I'm not really a rock guy, but I would have to say KISS is one of my favorite bands. Do I know KISS's music? I know a couple joints. Rock and roll all night. I was made for loving you or whatever the fuck. I get it. But I, for some reason, have always been uh, enamored with, like, the mythos of Kiss and, like, just the showmanship and the costumes and the makeup and uh, sort of the lore of Kiss and the drama of the band. There's a lot of good, like, uh, you know, documentaries and shows about Kiss. And I've read the books or the, I've listened to the audiobooks of uh, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons from Kiss. I like, uh, I don't know, I like it. And I just think, you know, I really wanted to see Elton John when he came to Edmonton a couple of years ago on his farewell tour. I didn't end up getting a chance to go see that. But even though I don't really know any of Elton John's music, I just thought, you know, just to go there and see somebody who's like such a legend perform has to be worth, worth it. You know, you're going to have fun regardless. So I, I like all genres of music. I remember back in 20. Yeah, 2018, me and my friend Philip went to go see Paul McCartney. I don't know one Paul McCartney song. And uh, we went to see Paul McCartney just, for the, just, for, just to soak up the sauce, you know? But Nickelback, I actually do rock with some Nickelback songs. Kiss, you know, that's mostly for the legendariness of it. And I do like some Kiss songs. 50 Cent, I do not give a fuck. I have to go. So this is a hefty donut goal. I mean... I don't expect us to fill the entire thing, but I just made it. I just inflated it because that way, if we do fill it, I could potentially go to multiple of those concerts. Bro, Live Nation, Ticketmaster, they do not be playing around. It'll be like, yeah, ticket is 200 bucks. First of all, already crazy. And then it's like a 50 or or $100 service fee. Bitch, for what? Clicking a button? And then... You know, there'd just be some other stuff associated with it, like little weirdo stuff. So anyways, this is, we are 1% filled that donut goal. Thank you, Eliza. You know, oh, Kilikina saw Elton John at Edmonton. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Kiss is a very old band. They've been around like 50 years. I don't know, man. I want to go see those 80-year-old dudes jump around on stage. What can I say? I'm crazy. I'm crazy. What else did I want to add? Okay. Before we get into it, in Discord, there is a new feature. If you're not in my Discord, join the Discord server. Let me put the link. Oh, it worked. Wow, my buttons are actually working. Damn. So there's a, there's in Discord voice chat, when you guys are hanging around in there and talking with each other, there's a new feature they added called Soundboard. And today, like you can upload custom sounds that are specific to your server and I added a bunch of the Stream Deck sounds that I use on stream, like Obamna, Obamna. and like, you know, this one. Thanks, Marco. And a bunch of them, a bunch of them. You're broke. That one. You're fucking broke. That one. So I added a bunch of those sounds to the, to the Stream Deck feature in Discord. So if you are a member of my Discord server and you're ever hanging out in voice chat and you wanted to live the real Marco, always Marco experience and feel what it's like to be me and have the, the power of those sounds at your fingertips. Now you can, now you can. Yeah. Benny and the Jets. I do know that song. I know some Beatles shit, you know, come together, Lucy in the sky with diamonds, yellow submarine. I get it. You know, I get it. If you go Nickelback, go general admission. Of, of course. What you think I'm going to get to meet and greet sub Chad Kroger. You know, those guys are from Alberta, by the way. Oh, you know who else is coming here this month? Jordan Peterson. Now, would Jordan Peterson be cool to go see just for the meme? Yeah, but, and by the way, Jordan Peterson is per performing, I don't know the word, at the same, like, venue as all those other bands I just named. Nickelback, 
Bro, Jordan Peterson is doing Nickelback level tickets. Go ahead, Jordan Peterson. But uh, he just didn't make the cut. Like, I, I don't know, man. I have to prioritize here. Like, in order of wanting to go the most to not wanting to go, um, it would be 50 Cent. I absolutely have to go, number one. Oh, Alex. Alex. Thank you. How Did I not hear the sound effect? Was that just me? How come I didn't hear that? We have to go number one. Where's the sound, bro? Oh, is it this? Hold on a second. Okay, 50 cent number one. Kiss, number two. Nickelback, number three. Jordan Peterson, number four. Sorry. Let me do a test donation here. Let me see something. Okay, the sound played. So why didn't it play for her? This is a test donation yeah, yeah, for 29 yeah. Canadian dollars. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Alex. So sweet. Make Eliza a mod and go enjoy One Direction for me. I mean, Kiss is basically One Direction. And so is... Uh, so is Nickelback. They're basically One Direction. So Eliza and Alex carrying this so far, we, which we appreciate. Silica Valley, what up? He lives very close to my place. Jordan Peterson does? That's insane. Pull up on him. Yeah, he's Canadian. So ch take this in. Of those acts that I just named, I live in Alberta. I'm from Alberta. Both Jordan Peterson and Nickelback are from Alberta, bro. Isn't that something? I feel bad. I should. I wonder if my. I wonder if. Jo I wonder if Jordan Peterson is gonna go out there in Edmonton and be like, "What's up? It's your boy JP. Y'all know I'm from here, right?" That's probably why he's playing the arena. I doubt he's playing, like the arena, in other cities. It's probably because he's from here. But I don't know. Maybe he's getting that fucking bag, skis. Where's the bag button? I gotta get the bag. Ah, uh, yeah. Jordan Peterson was on. Rogan, he can pull Nickelback numbers. That's so true, so true. The sound effect paid for you. Lol, the one time I donate. I don't know what's going on. <sighs> Write this down. Kisses One Direction. I saw Jordan Peterson in Ottawa a few years ago. It was amazing. Audience so quiet you could hear a pin drop, says Gabby. Okay, okay. Alex coming in with the hot dono. Gonna have to send more, yeah. Alberta's cursed. <laughs> Alberta's cursed because it created... <laughs> Nickelback and Jordan Peterson. Bro, what are you talking about? That's lit. I'm going to listen to Nickelback on my way to the Jordan Peterson uh, show. And then I'm going to listen to Jordan Peterson's audiobook on the way to Nickelback. Just for you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Rebecca B. Nickelback only played Fort Mac for the first time in 2019. I got to go and it was like Alberta Mecca. Straight up. Literally like a holy pilgrimage if you're from Alberta. What up, Straw Babies? Yes, Straw Babies, you were gifted. A bunch of you guys were gifted memberships on the last stream by very generous gifters. What up, Jared? As a matter of fact, one of those very generous gifters was, let me scroll back up. A. Louise Mack was going crazy. I think A. Louise Mack was the one who did it the craziest. I would shout out all the members, but it's too many members. Maybe I should do a members only stream. That'd be spooky. Okay. So thumbs up the stream because let me refresh this. There's no way. There's no way 140 of you are watching and only 86 likes. It doesn't make any sense. So let's, okay. Update on Building Fortunes Radio. Let's go over to Goon News. Live from Goon Headquarters in scenic Edmonton, Alberta, it's time for Goon News. Marco. With your host, always Marco. Marco. You give us five minutes, Marco. we'll give you the good. Remember, Marco, you know everything, remember? Remember, Marco, you Fuck know yeah. everything. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking animal. All right, good news. So here's the news. I spoke to Glenn. I spoke to Glenn. Uh, he's in Australia, so the time difference, we had to make it work, whatever. But I spoke to Glenn, and Glenn is a certified... G. What up, Scott? Oh, you cheated and liked the video on two accounts. Tisk tisk. 
Scott, by the way, I watched your video uh, about this controversy with that, forgive me, I'm forgetting his name, that Alex dude who is trying to like strike down uh, YouTube channels in order to like get rid of competition by just putting bullshit copy strikes. I anticipate the same thing is about to happen to me with this most, you know, this upcoming uh, documentary I made about a certain MLM company. And I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way you know of to like beat that or not fall into that. But uh, I don't know. Anywho, what up, Scott Schaefer? Appreciate you being here. What up, Abby S? Not tuning in for a while and hearing the new BFR Bites for the first time. It's special. It's special. Make the, hashtag make the chat green again. Mega. Make the chat make. Well, I guess that wouldn't be right because the word America is not in there. He fucked it up. What was I saying? I spoke to Glenn. Glenn is a G. It worked. It found better work this time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Alex in the cult. Alex is leading the campaign. Really, those, are, those aren't even concert funds. Those are uh, campaign funds for Eliza to become a mod. You know, we'll see. Good news. Eliza should be mod. <laughs> Eliza donated a ton. She should be a mod. You guys are hilarious. All right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't You know, I have to talk. There's a, there's a process. I have to talk to the council of elders. There's, it's very political. I don't just, I can't just click a button and make somebody a mod. You know, I hope you guys be patient with me. You got to understand. Um, okay. Scott says, if you get strikes, spread the word and get bigger creators to make videos about it. Yeah, maybe I'll get my boy CoffeeZilla on it. Scott Schaefer, get my boy Scott Schaefer on it. Ah, get my boy James Janney on it. Ah, flexing, he's flexing. Okay. Thank you, Blaze Goddess. God damn, I got to slow down the chat. It's going too fast. Obama. So, I spoke to Glenn. Glenn is a G. I'm going to try to get him on the stream soon come. But for tonight, what we have is the sequel, the bonus. This is the second week in a row. Scott and Peter have blessed us with a bonus episode of Losing Fortunes Radio. They did, normally it's Saturday night, but they've been ramping it up because the, the war is elevating to new heights. So they ramped it up and uh, they did one on this past Monday and one last Monday. So it's getting pretty serious. Appreciate you, Ed Tyler. Um, Eliza is my upline. Yep, right? Anyways, thumbs up the ting. That's what you should be doing. Thumbs up the stream. Be like Scott Schaefer. Thumbs up the stream. Maybe you two could have a verified YouTube channel one day. So that's what we're going to listen to today is we are going to listen to that. I encourage each and every one of you to get your Building Fortunes Radio bingo card ready because... And if you, it's the, it's pinned in the discord, but I will also put the link here in the chat for you guys that don't, uh, aren't there, whatever you can click this, open it in another tab or on another device. It randomly populates the 25 squares with different, uh, different options of things that Scott or Peter might say. So that's what we're going to listen to. This is losing fortunes radio. Um, let me, let me find it. They upload so much, it's insane. Literally, look at this. Not this. Not the void. Look at this. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Look at the dates. May 17, May 17, May 16, May 16, 16, 16, 15. 15. Like, bro, in the last two days, these motherfuckers have dropped so many episodes. Like, how does Peter not get tired of talking? And this is a guy who streams... I'm saying this, I stream multiple hours, you know, three times, two, three times a week, bro the fuck so anywho donation link in the chat if you want to so help me go to watch nickelback and kiss and 50 cent in concert not in that order imagine a festival with all three of those acts on it imagine a festival with jordan peterson nickelback kiss and 50 cent all on the same show like literally the most for like i me funding that for myself if I was like a rich Arab prince or like the son of a rich Arab prince, I would, I would do some shit like that for my sweet 16, thousand fucking percent. All right. Oh no. 
Scott and Peter would say, make Eliza Mod tears of joy, tears of joy. Well, I'm definitely not doing it then. If Scott and Peter said it. <laughs> Beyond says, I analyzed the likes on the stream. After Scott announced his alt account, I have been able to determine that Scott Schaefer is in fact a furry. Wow. Damn, that's amazing that you did that. That's crazy. Okay. Um, always mingling Peter, a.k.a. Ming. Call him Ming sometimes. What up, Joseph? It's actually Peter's show. He just has co-hosts. That's true. Um, I thought you are a rich Arab prince. I'm on my way. Streamlabs link in the chat. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Did you say Jordan Peterson? Yes, I did. He's coming to Edmonton. I'm not going, but anyways. Thumbs up the stream one last time. 160 watching, 109 likes. So I'm going to say one last time. Anyways, sounds like a Bonnaroo lineup. So funny. <laughs> Squamish Valley Music Festival lineup for real. Okay. Uh, let's let's listen. Glenn Logan returns with Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles for common MLM debates. Let's check it out. Oh, there's an ad. Oh, there's an ad. Here you go. You can check out. Let's see what <laughs> no. It's about to play this whole song now. Was that really Glenn? Let's go! What a day! Look at that duffer on the back of that bumper. She ain't even playing when she's shaking that rumper. And oh, you ain't know, she get lower than a muffler. Even with a girlfriend, the show stopping with a hustler. The way she move her body, she might see the Maserati. She wanna put it on me, trying to show me her tsunami. She make it hard to copy, always tight and never sloppy. And got her entourage and her own Glenn is a G, bro. she go again, riding through the stormy weather. You better button up if you wanna go get her. Cause it is what it is, everybody wanna love her. But when she pop it, boy, you better run for cover. She wants her body like a cyclone, and she makes me wanna do it all night long. God damn. What a day. That is insane. Who did this? Who did that? I got to check the donation history here and see if that was really Glenn. Yeah, Cyclone. Cyclone is one of my favorite songs of all time. I'll let you guys know that. Uh... Just a classic, you know? I remember being in like seventh grade at the school dance, Cyclone comes on. <laughs> Back up, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> uh, I love Cyclone. Whoa, baby bash, woo, we just got out bagged. Glenn, how did cheer dance to this? <laughs> wow. That donation is worth more than what Scott and Peter estimate I make in an entire month. Insane. It's been a long time since we've triggered the Cyclone. Um, don't know. That's amazing. Thank you. Wow. Now pole dance with it. You're hilarious. Bread, cheese, lettuce, make a whole sandwich. Yep. <laughs> Scott about to talk about that donation in the next episode. Yeah, he's going to be like, so Marco got $150 and... Some ridiculous song started playing, and he puts on a cowboy hat and a gold chain and starts throwing the money and dancing around, and, you know, he's just stupid. <laughs> That's what he's going to say. That's crazy. Maybe I am going to go to these fucking concerts after all, y'all. Um. <laughs> uh. Is Mrs. Incredible still one of the donations things on the screen? I'm not sure. Let me let me see. You listen to that song three times a week. I'm from the deep south. It went hard when it came out here. Dude, let me see. Okay, let me see if that was actually from Glenn. Because I'm going to have to roll out the red carpet for Glenn in a big, big way if that's true. Let me see. Let me see. It says, not Glenn, but I can't confirm if it actually is Glenn. I'm assuming it's Glenn. So if it is Glenn, 
Thank you, bro. Scott and Peter are going to be pissed. But maybe it's not Glenn, as per the username, not Glenn. Um, also, there was a $5 super chat here that I think I missed. Okay, it says, Eliza for mod, you cowards from Even Stevens. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I like how so far this chat has been not about... Uh, I got in an argument with oh, my shit. father about two months ago. Um, Sorry, it started playing the episode. I like how this has not been about MLM at all so far. It's just been about, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just literally been about Eliza being a mod and what else? Eliza being a mod and Cyclone and Scott Schaefer. Okay. Nicki verse. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the Nicki Minaj verse from the song only if the bag permits. If the bag permits. Alex again? Hey, top Glenn, but do you like me? Hashtag Eliza for mod. Do you like me? <laughs> You're too fucking bored. This is, dude, y'all gotta stop, bro. For real. There should be a limit to how much each person can donate. Uh like individually because then i get happy when people drop bag and then people drop too much bag and then i start to feel bad and then i message them on instagram and i'm like are you sure you don't want me to refund it and so we gotta let's balance it out here y'all everybody has to do their share on the cult on the commune okay everybody does their share and you know we get there there's 200 people watching 183 people watching let's do some quick calculations some quick math ready all right boom 180, let's say times five. 900 bucks! Holy! Everybody drop five bucks. 100, it's a, it's a 800 bucks. Easy. Easy, dude. 10 bucks, 1800. Hello. Five bucks, 900. Blaze Goddess says, My nickname is Mrs. Incredible because of a medical condition I have. It makes me super flexible. Well, I guess, but. I, I'm a fan of Mrs. Incredible for a different reason, but I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get so warm wearing this hat. All right, let's listen. This is uh, follow along on your Losing Fortunes radio sheet. Let me know when you get a bingo, and we will keep rolling. We're halfway filled up this dono goal, and we've only been live 30 minutes. Maybe I'll end the stream early. <laughs> I'm just playing. Okay, and uh, let's um, check it out. Here we go. Here we go. How do I start it from the beginning? Here we go. Here in Australia, genius. They don't know who Glenn. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, Marco. we're here to help our PM Marco. marketing network lead customers yeah. build their businesses yeah. and make the world a better place. <laughs> at Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people important you to like you. Me? So spread the word, <laughs> yeah. tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Meagles. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes Radio. It's <laughs> www.buildingfortunesradio.com. For those people unfamiliar with my voice, my name is Peter Mingles. We own this whole thing, and we are we. doing a special radio show with a good friend of ours. His name is Scott Johnson. Scott and I usually do a radio show on Saturday night at 8 p.m. This? Eastern Time. But today See, is a special radio recaps. show. We're waiting on a... Marco, an you convinced me. Have fun at Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, you guys are killing me today, dude. This is ridiculous. Literally ridiculous. Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> so what do you do for work? Oh, it's hard to explain. Cut to me fucking do doing this. Alright, appreciate you, Alex, saying you want me to be happy. All right, all right, let's continue. Marco, stop objectifying cartoon women. Sexist big, so true. So true. Five times five times five times five. Is that on the bingo sheet? Let me see. Okay. Who is the voice of the intro for their show? I have no idea. Literally no idea. It's like they paid someone on Fiverr to do it, it sounds like. 
You did the you did do the Lord's work today. Oh no, Jana Miller. Here's my part. Also, Scott and Peter, you suck. So true. Thank you, Jana Miller. By the way, Jana Miller, I uh so I talked on the last stream about my collaboration with uh, CC Suarez and how I didn't know where it went. Apparently, it was taken down, but. I guess she listened to my last stream because she messaged me on Instagram yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And she said that she was listening to my stream and uh, she doesn't remember what happened to it or uh, how, the, how the message that I sent to her back in January had gone on red. But she told me that she put the uh, video back up. So it's back up on her channel, the collaboration we did. Um... And I saw that Jaina Miller, you were one of the comments there. This is like 2021, I'm pretty sure. And that I saw you left a comment saying that you donated to my GoFundMe that I had at the time because of uh, legal troubles that I was facing because of one of my videos. So just wanted to say double thank you, uh, Jaina Miller, for real. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, I have money on my hat. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Wow. Sp money spilling out, y'all. Spilling out. Okay. Let me see if... Re uh, beyond recapping... Peter recapping the show in the intro has to be on here, right? Before we actually start BFR, enjoy your concerts. Wow. You're fucking poor. Thank you so much, Lily Lucky. And by the way, you know what? You know what, y'all? Let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get the donations out of the way. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'll wait. I'll give y'all. I'll give y'all a minute. I'll give y'all sixty seconds, and we can do that. We can make me a millionaire, or even better. Billions and billions. What do you say? What do you say, y'all? Aaron says that video with CC was how I found you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Less goo. <laughs> That's goo. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you. Wow. What's going on? Last one, I promise. <laughs> oh shit! I pressed the wrong one. Oh shit! I gotta get the bag. Wow! It's actually going. Look at this donograph. Wow. <laughs> Billions and billions, Obama. billions Thanks, and Marco. billions. I'm not a loser. Shut up, bitch. I take responsibility. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Gotcha. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, he's beginning to believe that you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you, you want, you, you could do so, you, 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 could, you, you want, you want him to do you so much, you could do anything. How come when I do a dono goal about me going to dick around at a Nickelback concert, it goes crazy? But when I'm like, guys, come on, it's for legal, you know, to hire a lawyer. Guys, come on, it's for something. I got to go to Goon Corps, guys. Uh, what you uh, about? How come when it's some, for something like that? How come when it's for something like that, it's crickets, bro? Keep the lights on. Johnny! Come to Toronto, hashtag Eliza for mod. Oh my god. A small token of my appreciation. Oh my goodness, you guys. What is going on? There's, enough, there's more coming up from, from YouTube now, too. These are from Streamlabs. You guys, this is going too buck. Too bucko. Too buck wild. Okay, Cat the Barber, I've got my bingo card ready. So true. And uh, another one from Mr. There's No Spoon gifting a membership. Wow. For the Emperor Cowboy Hat Face. Thank you, Kilikina. Wow, for the Emperor. Even Stevens got gifted a membership. You get a membership. You get a membership. This is insane. I was just trolling, by the way, but y'all go. Take responsibility. Might as well just go for it, huh? Might as well just fill it on up then. Thank you, Mr. There's No Spoon, for gifting that membership to Even Stevens. 
Scott Schaefer says, run a fundraiser for your ligma diagnosis. Dude, that's not a joke. Don't joke about that, because that's serious. Because I actually had ligma at one point. I actually did have ligma at one point. So, I mean, I've, I've been pretty private with my, with my personal health issues regarding my ligma, but I just, would, I just will say, Scott, that that is no laughing matter. And um, I may have to. I may have to at some point. Come a mod by the power of the council Eliza will become yours. My boy Yoda spitting facts. <laughs> With the Yoda speech. Wow, what's going on, you guys? Bro, what is going on? Beyond recruited five new members to the cult. Scott Schaefer with a 99 cent super chat. Let's peer pressure Scott, Scott Schaefer to get that bag up. <laughs> oh no, he dropped the second one. He dropped the second one worth 99 cents. Okay, okay. For the Ligma. Uh, uh, thank you, Beyond, so much for gifting those memberships. Sam Stark as well. What the fuck is going on, you guys? Marco! Uh, Connor Banshee, Silica Valley, Nightwing, who's ex whose membership uh, just expired and now it's renewed. Michael Milner, Jen and Two Cats. Who else got one? One, two, three, four, five. That is five. Insane. Insane. Oh, Cat the Cat the Barber gifting memberships too? Oh wait. Oh shit! Bro, A Louise oh. Mac, dude. Mod Green Adian first. Oh my god. Do you like me? <laughs> Green Adian with the ten sheet. Bro. Twenty members, dude. Are you kidding me? Ah! And Cat the Barber, five members. No stinking way. And Scott Schaefer, another ninety-nine cent, and another ninety-nine cent. And Sheila, a member. <laughs> oh my god! I'm fucking rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I gotta get the bag. Dude, this is a family. I might, I might have enough to go watch Fast and Furious 10 on Friday. Shut up, bitch. This is fucking insane, dude. And a five dollar super chat. From Aaron C, because we love Nickelback, also Eliza for mod. Dude, what the heck on earth? I have to shout out these memberships, bro. This is nutty. You see, bro, the 5x5x5x5 five by five by five by five forced matrix compensation plan actually works in this cult. This is the only cult that the 5x5 five five actually works in. In these multi-level marketing companies, it doesn't work. But I promise you, you're watching it unfold right before your eyes. In this, in this company, in this cult, in this cult, it works. 40 minutes, and we're at $400. That's like six, that's like $80 every 30 seconds or something like that, if my math is correct. Beyond, with the five memberships, Scott Schaefer with a, a few different 99 cent donations, because I'd be losing track. A. Louise Mack, gifted memberships. I, I swear, the whole chat has to be green by this point, right? Almost completely. Okay, let me look. Okay. <sighs> Katrina, Danielle, Sweet Goth. These are all the people who are gifted memberships. Specs, Amanda Del Rey, and then Cat the Barber gifts five memberships. So I don't even know who is which is from who. Uh, Jay, LaSalle Story, Kareem, uh, Alexis, Lucy Tunes, Alicia, Leafhead, Bethany, <laughs> Traveling Lunatic. Uh, Bob, Rob Ross, Amanda Burroughs, Distro Joe, Da Like Totally, Chase Andrews, Emas, Kristen, Ginny Jin, uh, Gabriel, Milo, Bug. Dude, this is insane. Scott is doing the equivalent of going to a strip club and throwing a handful of quarters, says Beyond. I didn't say it. Beyond said it. And then Sheila M, member for one month, executive team leader. Thank you. 
Wow, gifting 20. And that's the second stream in a row A. Louise Mac did that. For real, A. Louise Mac, you are a fucking G, okay? You are a G. The cult recognizes you. The cult puts its hand on your forehead. That's what it does. Um, <clears throat> Sam Stark says, I needed to pay my tithe. So true, you guys. Goon tax is real. Okay, goonflation. <laughs> We got, there's goonflation. Seriously, it's going up, you know? The, buy the dip. It's, a, it's not a bubble. Marco is paying people to give memberships. <laughs> oh, dude, Scott and Peter. I, you guys know they're watching this right now. Scott is like watching this. Ah! That's what's happening. Me running to the bank to deposit a Nikki bag. I'm waiting for the pull up in the monster, says Abies. Yeah, they want that Nicki Minaj verse. Watch Marco never come back. Oh my goodness. You guys. This is insane. I'm, I'm catching up on the chat because this is madness. Too bad you only make $30 a month according to Scott and Peter, right? Dude, insane. No way, Kilakina. I know the dono goal for Streamlabs says that it's only at 415, but with all these memberships, we're definitely past that, bro. This is insane. Thank you guys so much, man. Best cult in the world, seriously. This is the greatest company in the world. I'm gonna be in court with Primerica, and they're gonna be like, your honor, we'd like to show you evidence that Marco is just making these videos to enrich himself on his YouTube channel with his own self-described cult. And they're gonna show this, this video. Come on, Marco. Fuck M. Yes. Here, where is the one? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, you stupid fucking asshole. Wrong one. It's this one. Come on, Marco. Fuck him. <laughs> Thank you. Valerie Michelle with the five super chat. This chain and hat combo is really doing it for me. Yeah, you like that? Come on now. Oh. Y'all like that? Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, say can you see... By the dawn's early... Obama! Wow. Gifted memberships. Gift settings. Thank you, Rebecca, in the chat, giving a tutorial on how to turn on gift... Uh, how to turn on memberships to receive them. Appreciate you, Samuel Gozo. Let me see what's going on here. Five memberships from beyond. Let me add these up. Five, 10, 15, 20, 40 memberships. 45 new memberships, bro. Now with Sheila M's membership gift. Beyond with five. A. Louise Mack with 20. Cat the Barber with five. Kilakina with five. Sheila with five. 10, 15, 20, 40. Okay, 40, my mistake, 40. You never answered my question, says Alex. Do you like me? Hashtag Eliza for mod. Do you like me? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you. This is insane. Insane. Jimmy Bastion, you're going to go on Building Fortunes? Let's go. Eliza for God. Dude. Dude. What happens if you hit 500? That's a great fucking question. I didn't expect to hit it. That's why I don't know. I'll do something. Oh, yes, right. I said if we hit 500, I will sing the entirety of Nickelback's Rockstar. Wow. Dude, Roger Waters, BB... Sila, uh, Patrick, Glenda, Christian, they all got gifted memberships. And it looks like Sila Jane was also gifted a membership. Oh, yes. From Kilikina, Marilyn, Claire, Abby S, Sila, Brianna, all got gifted memberships. This is crazy. Goonflation going up, but the wages are stagnating. <laughs> By the dip. Fuck yeah. I gotta do this every goddamn stream. The fuck? Okay, I'm catching up in, on the chat. This is insane. Completely green and blue. Dude. Mez. Enjoy and sing the shit out of Candy Shop for me, yeah? I take you to the candy shop. Lollipop. 50 single crazy. Scott Storch beats with the violin, the like Arab chords. 
Marco, play that tropical beat. I got you. you. Like that. More money in five minutes than Scott's decade in MLM. You said it, not me. Okay. By the dawn's early Obama. This is crazy, bro. This is going nuts. Alex says, I'm trying to be Empress. Oh, uh, lol. <laughs> you guys are insane. You guys are in quite insane. Man, whoever that first person was with the 150 dono that triggered Cyclone, not Glenn, for Nickelback, insane. Thank you so much, bro, for real. Scott's nose hair is going to stand on end when he watches this video. You know what he's actually going to do? He's going to go, Marco's goons are so stupid. All these drug-addled, drug-addicted idiots giving him money. They're, just, they're even stupider than he is. That's 100% what he's going to say. Damn, bro. This is fucking insane. Thank you so much, guys. Primerica, Scott, Peter, World Financial Group, ACN, I Am Academy. They're all watching this, like, punching the air badly. I'd pay for a Marco concert parody of other songs and his soundboard. Okay, are we done? Can I get on with the episode now? Craziest intro in in all of live streaming history. We haven't even been, haven't even been going an hour yet. Marco begging for money again. <laughs> I guess you guys just want to see a young boy fulfill his dreams of seeing Nickelback, which I appreciate. Natasha, welcome to the call, to executive team leader. She got that rank up. Thank you. Don't forget to send the drugs. What time is it? Oh, shit. What did, it, what did they say at that one? What time is it? It's Britney, bitch? No, that's who is it. What time is it? Peanut butter jelly time? I don't know. What am I supposed to say to that? What time is it? I don't know. Fuck. Is this a reference I'm missing? I feel like I'm missing it. What time is it? Says OC can see. I don't know what you mean, bro. I'm sorry. But thank you for that, by the way. Thank you for that. Thank you. Aww. System gets the people, buddy. So true. This is the system, bro. <laughs> don't forget to send the drugs. Marco grifting. Marco Mucha Bear at it again. Does the dono come with the starter kit? Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Boy, I ranked up too. Congrats, Miss Amanda, ranking up. So funny. S summertime? Game time? Right? Hammer time? Josephine with the 30 bones. Wow. Go see Kiss. I saw them recently. They were amazing. Wow. Thank you so much, Josephine. I'm really excited for that. I got to go see Kiss, bro. For real. What time is it? I don't know. What time is it? 7.50 p.m. where I am. Oh, I'm such an idiot, bro. I'm such a fucking idiot. I know what time it is. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. Literally the only time it ever is. Thank you, Straw Babies. Fuck, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid that I didn't get that. Who's this now? Josephine. Okay, Josephine. Go see Kiss. I saw them recently. They were amazing. Oh. This is this is the best stream of all the year, bro. To support your monthly income according to Peter and Scott. Yeah, 199, that's like 10% of it right there. Thank you, Katrina. Natasha, thank you for joining the cult. Okay, this actually is gonna have to slow down now, otherwise it's gonna be too many distractions. Between listening to the show, okay. Between listening to the BFR episode and following along with the bingo sheet and reading the chat and the notifications popping up for donors is gonna be too much. It's gonna be too much. Okay. What what's the time? Time for Eliza to be mod. Glenn was making fun of Scott and Peter. I, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't heard it. Alright, 200 people watching, 154 likes. Thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the team. And let's let's check it out. Alright. So now you're begging us to stop giving you money. Okay, never mind, never mind. All right, let's check it. An invited guest to come in, and we scheduled this one for 9 p.m. Eastern Time after rescheduling it as per his request at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time to be able to talk. 
Kendra K with the dono. She says, I want to see Post Malone, but I'll be 35 weeks pregnant, so live my dreams for me, Marco. Wow. Aww. First of all, congratulations on being pregnant, Kendra K. Congratulations on having your club shot up. And uh, I actually have worked with Post Malone before. I was his, uh, I was part of a concert of his back in 2016 before before he really blew up, like before Rockstar and all that, before the face tattoos. Go on my Instagram, scroll all the way back. You'll see a picture of me looking very, very young with uh, Post Malone. And there's some other rappers that I've got posted up there too. That's not all the rappers I've met, but some of the pictures I just took down because I, I looked so bad in them. But here, I'll just show it to you. Here's the Post Malone one. Look how young I was, bro. This is 2016 this was posted. Me and Post Malone. There's a few other ones. There's a few other ones. I, I've lived a life. I've lived a life prior to, the, prior to this YouTube life. I lived a life. So thank you for that, Kendra. I appreciate you. So stop gifting, says Eliza. It's a little reverse psychology going on here. Come on now. All right. Mm. You shouldn't have left for 15 minutes then, Meek. I don't know what to tell you, big dog. You missed the bag, Meek. You, the early bird catches the bag, you know what I mean? Early goon catches the bag. He seems annoyed that Glenn rescheduled. Yeah, literally. It's like, bro, what do you want Glenn to do? Stay up till 4 a.m.? He's in Australia, bro. Chill. Okay. I love that the chat is green. This is like a highlight of my YouTube career, seeing the entire live chat with 200 people completely green. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Who and how much? All the goons came together, bro. It was like it was like Avengers uh, Endgame when everyone came through the portal. That's what this stream has been like. Everyone just like bag, bag, bag. We love it. We were very young. I was a wee lad. So true. Green beams. So true. All right. Let's continue on. Talk to a gentleman who's going to represent a gentleman named Marco Mukaber. Mooka Bear. You might as well spell it the right way. Go look up, up online. M O U K H A I B E R. Mook Haber. That's the way we say it. He says it differently. He says it wrong. I say my own name wrong. Okay. Uh, I don't know where the the submission form is beyond, but please add Mook Haber to the board and add them re recapping. Uh, here, that'll be this one. Scott emphasizes the number four. Maria, welcome to the cult, Maria. Thank you for joining the cult uh, and paying your paying your starter kit fee. Um, yeah, him him recapping the history of BFR in every episode or like on an episode has to be part of the on the list there. Okay. Aaron says, "I've never donated to anyone on YouTube. You must be special." You're making me feel special. I feel like a special girl right now. You added the five by five by five. All right, let's keep going. Peter, Peter's getting more unhinged with every episode, honestly. Represent Marco as though he's not banned Marco from coming on the channel, right? Attacked by the FTC. <laughs> it's Marco Mukaber. And Marco is a gentleman who also has a stage name, if you will, on YouTube. Always Marco. Okay, Lily Lucky says it says Mukaber on my bingo sheet. Okay, I'm going to refresh this page, see if it gives me a new set. Okay, it, uh, it, right there, Mukaber. Okay, there we go, there we go. Um, let's see. Peter recaps BFR origin. There it is, wow. <laughs> this guy says don't have a clue. You guys, I could, how could I ever break up with Scott and Peter? You know, how could I ever end, stop talking about building fortunes radio? You know, to think I took a year away from doing this content. Can you imagine? Go <laughs> always Marco. You can check out his channel. He needs the extra subscriptions. Um, but if you go and you I take do a feel look bonita. at always Marco dot L O L, you'll see what some other people have said about Always Marco. So always Marco dot L O L because he's a joke. <laughs> well, Scott Johnson, <laughs> this, is this is his radio show, and we are waiting for a guest who is supposed to be taking 
Marco's stance on his anti-MLM conference, which they called the MLM conference, that was done back on the Ides of March, which happened to also be, I think... Best uh, no, I cult think... ever. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Glenn has a channel called MLM is Fraud. Yes, that's the channel I believe that he comments on, comments using. I think it's somewhere around the Ides of March of 2023, um, done by a gentleman named Professor Bill Keep over at the uh, College of New Jersey, who's a uh, pseudo, if you will, marketing professor, alleged. Let me out, pseudo marketing, alleged marketing professor. I'm putting it on 1.25 speed, y'all. Let's call it. MLM guru expert kind of a guy and uh, Marco did a presentation there that we were going to chat about with this guest who is still not here yet Scott so uh, we'll talk about sounds so pissed also the fact that it's been two full months since I even did the conference speech and they still haven't found time to recap it even though they do an hour and a half long show 90 minute show every week and with the past two weeks they've done two we'll talk about that in just a second but thanks for being here on the special edition of the Scott Johnson radio show Hey, hey, Peter. Yeah, this is a special show, and um, we're looking forward to talking about Marco. Hopefully, our guest will be here. If not, we can talk about Marco. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is no problem. Two minutes into your show, th talking about the same thing you talk about every week, as though it's like you needed to be convinced. You only, you only talk about Marco. What do you mean? We could talk about Marco. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, my God. It's not Scott Schaefer with the dono. <laughs> Billions and billions. I'm not a loser. Thanks, Marco. You guys, dude. Marco. I gotta get the bag. Marco. Dude. $500, let's go. I want the Nickelback song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peter's voice getting higher and higher as he gets more angry. Scott, thank you, bro. I know it didn't show up in the dono goal here because this, this one, for some reason... Well, it's Streamlabs, so it only picks up donations you make on Streamlabs. But with, with the YouTube donos and the, and the memberships that you guys have dropped, we're definitely over the $500 mark. So if your OCD wants, wants to fill up this one just so the full thing is green, that's up to you. But we did it, y'all. We did it. Scott Schaefer, thank you, bro. I'll tell you, Scott, for, for, I don't know why, but it's, it's rare that one of my YouTube, uh, YouTube friends, like actual creators, drops a bag so i really i really appreciate that dude thank you for real seriously and you be watching too silica valley says bill kept if you know what i mean so true oh man all right you want the nickelback song oh, okay all right scott coming with the bag so true all right here we go all right Oh, my Building Fortune Radio shirt. I'm not wearing it. Fuck. That's okay. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. Let me do this real quick. I'm going to pull up the, the um, karaoke version. Nickelback. I don't think my voice will um, hold up doing the yeah. Chad Kroger voice the whole time. So I'll just do it normal. Here we go. Ready? What the fuck is this? Here we go. All right, y'all can hear this? Ah, <laughs> all right, here we go, no, hold on. All right. Oh, this version sucks. Let me just play the original shit. I gotta, for some reason when I play it from YouTube and I'm streaming the, the audio, like this, it doesn't sync up properly. So I'm gonna play it here off my phone, ready? All right, Rockstar, here we go. Standing in line, the clubs will never get in. It's like the bottom of the ninth and I'm never gonna win this. Life ain't turn out quite the way I want it to be. I want a brand new house on an episode of Cribs and a bathroom I could play baseball in. Got a king size tub big enough for 10 plus me. I need a credit card that's got no limit and a big black jet with a bedroom in it. Gonna join a mile high club at 37,000 feet. 
I want a new tour bus full of old guitars, Miles Star on Hollywood Boulevard. Somewhere between Cher and James Dean is fine with me. I'm gonna trade this life for fortune and fame. I'd even cut my hair and change my name. Oh, just so wanna be big rock stars, live in hilltop houses, get a 15 cars. The girls come easy and the drugs come cheap. We'll all stay skinny cause we just want it. And we'll hang out in the coolest bars with the VIP and the movie stars. Every good gold digger's gonna wind up there. Every beach bump running with the beach blonde hair. And we'll... Hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. Hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. Great like Elvis without the tassels. Hire eight bodyguards that love to beat up assholes. Sign a couple autographs so I can meet my meals for free. I'm gonna dress my ass in the latest fashion Get a front door key to the Playboy Mansion Gonna date a centerfold, loves to blow my money for me I'm gonna trade this life for fortune and fame I'd even cut my hair and change my name Wanna be big rock stars living in hilltop houses 15 cars, the girls come easy and the drugs come cheap. Stay skinny cause we just won't eat it. Fight out in the coolest bars, in the VIP with the movie stars. Every good gold digger's gonna wind up there. Every beat bunny with the bleach blonde hair and we'll hide out in the private room with the latest dictionary in today's who's who they'll get you anything with that evil smile everybody's got a drug dealer on speed dialing hey hey i wanna be a rock star there you go boy Thumbs up the team. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. I gotta get the bag. God did. Suck it, Scott and Peter. Sweating, yay. Sometimes I forget lyrics. What can I say? <laughs> Spin this shit backward one time on him. Damn, man. Did I miss some shit while I was doing that? Did I miss some donations? Cat the Barber joining for uh, a one member for one month. I have the bingo app open in one tab and the submission form in the other. I'm a pro. Yeah. Put your whole Marcusi into it. Oh, my God. Not the Marcusi. I got to do this on every goddamn stream, bro. I swear to God. This is horrific, says Jimmy. Jimmy, you can't say that. No. <laughs> you guys. Come on now. I know almost all those lyrics off by heart. I only had to peek at the lyrics on my phone a couple times. Marco glorifying drugs again. Where's the tribute band? Drink some water. This looks like one of those ladies summertime hats. A sun hat. That's what it's called. When I spin it backwards, it looks like a sun hat. It actually looks like it's not even there. This is a weird judge. Does creatine have the side effect of making you sing off key? No. <laughs> not, not you critiquing my... Dude, I was, I was on key. How about... How about that? How about I was on key? You know? (laughs) 
Our leader is so brave. So true. Karaoke night in Discord. Get this man a cold beer. He doesn't care about it getting demonetized. I don't give a fuck. You got his bag. Cyclone already got us demonetized, bro. <laughs> bleep bunny with the bleep blonde hair. Sometimes it be like that. <laughs> you guys. You like my cowboy judge character? This is my cowboy judge rapper character. It's mixed up. When all the bags drop, when the bags drop like this, every personality comes out for a little appearance. I'll tell you that much. Suck it, Scott and Peter. Oh, yeah, there was a dono I missed. One or two. Let me see. Need you to perform at my mod celebration party. Sugar Mama dropped $53 at Suck it, Scott and Peter. Marilyn said, there you go, boy. Oh, my God. $41, $53. Oh, my God. Both you guys. Crazy. This is insane. We're an hour in. And, uh, fuck, click, ah, fuck, I clicked away from this, from the YouTube. We're an hour in. Maybe I should just end it. Just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, y'all. Maybe I should just take the money and run, baby. Go start a new life with this $500. Shit, I clicked away from the YouTube for a second, so I can only scroll up to the comment that has all the copyright with the check marks, whoever wrote that. Okay, I'm... No, no, actually, I, I was past that, so we're good. Let me see. Crystal, I would donate more to not have to hear Nickelback. Hey. With the bag, anything is possible. Next video, infiltrating Nickelback. Okay. Hilarious beyond. A straw sun hat. Okay. It almost looks photoshopped on. The hat looks like a TikTok filter. You know how on like TikTok Live, when you donate, you can put filters on people? That's, what th that's what's happening right now. Ooh, look at me wearing it. This is how Jamie Foxx would wear a cowboy hat. Get well soon, Jamie Foxx. I heard he had a stroke. Okay. Sing rock and roll all night next. Conservative men, they do it to me. Sing the family-friendly baby shark. So now, that this, so now this channel and this live stream has just become a karaoke... Thing. Love it. Dude, I, don't play with me. I'll reset this dono goal for a different song. You think I won't? I, I'll do it right now. Just cherish this moment. Screenshot this. All right. Let me, re, let me redo it. Donation goal. Let's call it. All right. Sing any song. Sing any song. Here's the caveat. I have to agree to it. I have to agree. I have to agree. You can't make me sing some shit that's like all, you know, the N-word or something. All right. Thirst trap. <laughs> Thirst trap. <laughs> they want karaoke. This is ridiculous. Okay. What, what, what is this show? All right. Here we go. You know, one thing I was thinking about on the last show that we didn't get to. Um, because we Drake song, I would approve. We just ran out of 50 song I would approve. Our time is I wanted to talk a little bit about Bill Keith. You mentioned Bill Keith, professor in New Jersey, a uh, business professor, and like you said, alleged MLM expert. Um, and, and I was just thinking about, you know, this is on Marco's uh, YouTube too. You can see one of his uh, thumbnails on one of his videos. But, and just so you know, let's yeah. interrupt your conversation because uh, Marco's guest or guest speaker is here. Oh, so let's go, let's go get him. Oh, yeah. Why do they call him Marco's representative, Marco's guest speaker? Like, let him be his own man, bro. Uh, he dropped off. He dropped off. So okay. gonna, um, oh, he had the same problem last, uh, last time. So he tried, to keep, he tried to get on, tried to get off. So let's, um, why don't we queue up this one before we worry about talking about Bill Keith. So queue this up while he is trying to figure out how to get online. Scott? Hello? Oh. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're here. So why don't you? Why don't we do an introduction for Marco's um, spokesperson? And he's still trying to get online, but he's at least he's showing. So why don't you do right. that? And and this way at least we'll be on topic and we won't have all that dead air. Couple votes for my neck, my back. I like that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, and he's calling in from Australia, so we have to have really good connections here all the way from here to down under, so I can understand why he might be having some difficulty. So um, Glenn is our guest and we've had Glenn on maybe half a dozen times, including a week ago. Uh, we had Glenn on just talking about Marco and, you know, all of his uh, challenges, let's call them. And Glenn actually, at least he says he likes both 
us and Marco for different reasons. And he would really like us together, which I just don't think I just typically don't, you know, associate with cocaine dealers um, and shysters, um, you know, those kinds of people just, I don't, I just don't even want to, you know, talk to them directly. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to them indirectly and to all his goons. In fact, I invited a couple. They are manic. Keep in mind, I have them on 1.25 speed, but still. A couple of his goons on this show recently, uh, since the last show, I, I invited uh, a couple of people who made comments. One of them said he would email me soon, he said, uh, but he hasn't done that yet. Another guy made some kind of a comment on my YouTube and I, I asked him to come in and I think he, he chickened out. Like most of them do chicken out. So that's just the way it goes. That's a lie. And so, hey, let's, um, let's, see if we have, let's see if we have Glenn. Glenn, you here? Glenn, you got to speak up. We don't hear you, Glenn. Microphone turned on. Hold on one second, Scott. Sorry Scott describes an emoji. Again. Yep. Oh, there he is. He was having problems with his laptop, I think, the last time. Glenn, are you here? Glenn, your microphone is on. If you can hear us, we cannot hear you. So, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn. Yeah, I'm hearing you, Peter. I don't hear Glenn. Yep. This thing, I'm logged in, but I can't hear you, he said. That's interesting. I just got a text from Glenn. Well, we're here. So, tell him to hang up and go try again. Yeah. I'll give him another second. Wait, did he already make an unintentionally homoerotic comment? Oh, no, that's not about me. Okay, hold on. We haven't yet. Okay, finish your intro, Scott. Ed says, so Scott and Pete, hit me up, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'll sing Taylor Swift. I'll sing My Neck, My Back, WAP. Gobble me, gobble me, sweet, spit down inside of me. Take it, take it all out for it. Drip out inside of me. Easy, bro. Easy, WAP. I've performed WAP on my stream before, bro. Real ones, no. Yeah, so, um, you know, we had a good conversation with Glenn. He likes um, certain things that we say. He likes certain things that Marco says. I'm not sure what he likes about Marco exactly. Okay, and dealer box, the, Mark. This particular show is to so funny. review... Uh, various things about Marco and have Glenn kind of assume the position of Marco if he can, you know, stoop himself that low. That's going to be a challenge for, for Glenn, I think. I can go you know, to me. Just invite yep. me on the show, you pussy -o. Hey. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Awesome. How are you doing, guys? Excellent. Good. How are you? Good. So I just had a few problems logging in, but I'm, I'm in now, so it's all good. Yeah, that's all that matters. Glenn, we were just um, introducing you here on the show, uh, you know, giving people some background about the previous shows we've had with you and, the, and particularly last week's show. Um, and we wanted to sort of continue that conversation <clears throat> and, and kind of put you in the position of, you know, from Marco's um, and, and you're free to talk about, well, this is what Marco would think about this. Or if you want to, you can say, this is what I think about this, you know, whatever you want to do along those lines is, is fine. So Hey, Scott and Peter, why don't you just ask Marco if you're curious to know what Marco thinks about something? Uh, honestly, bro, the way I'm wearing this hat is so sexy, bro. Aww. The way I'm wearing this hat with this chain, imagine I put my glasses like E40 like this on top of it. This literally looks like some pimp shit. Straight up. E40. Listen to the Bill of Fortune radio on the YouTube. Listen to the radio show Scott and Peter had to talk about me. <laughs> Listen to the radio show, Glenn called in from Australia. Listen to the radio show, Glenn called in from Australia. Ooh. <laughs> y'all don't know about E-40. I'm sorry, if y'all don't know about the rapper E-40, that would go over your head. But trust me, it was funny. All right. Assume the position. Oh, yeah, they did say assume the position. Let me go ahead. Michael Key says, love from Arizona. Aww. No, Michael. Love from Edmonton. Aww. All right. Okay. We just wanted to have kind of a, <clears throat> a conversation. And uh, Peter, did you want to ask some questions up front, or do you want to just dig into these comments that I made about Marco at the uh, NLM conference recently? Well, yeah, I was thinking maybe. Okay, okay, Glenn. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could go through. Um, I'll start with. I've got about six points of different things that Marco said in his speech. If I can just start with the first point, I'll give Sure, but not yet. Well, yeah, not yet. Let's uh, we have new people listening in and they might not know anything. They don't know who Glenn is, they don't know Not who true. Who. They're all it's all the same goons still, Peter and Scott. Except now they have memberships. They don't know who Peter is, they don't know who Scott is. So let's use just a few minutes of a background, if you will, of who we are. So and I'm I'm not worried about who you are, Glenn, for this example. We're talking about Marco because we're introducing this concept with rebutting, if you will, Marco's speech. So if you know 
uh, Marco's answer, then you could, you know, answer the question as if you were Marco. If you don't know, we might know. And because we've listened to enough of Marco's stuff and he said enough of things that we'd be able to figure this stuff out. So yeah, well, I, mean, start... I, I agree with probably 98% of what Marco says. So. Okay. Um, so so there you go. You, then you know his answer. So let's go. This will be uh, somewhat entertaining, I'm sure. So Scott, yep. your background, real quick, if you will. You don't have to go specific, specific. Jesus. But in reference to this Amway conversation and MLM, give us a little bit of the background for those people that are unfamiliar with you. Yes, uh, I was in. My wife and I were in Amway um, years ago. From oh, your wife was in it too. New information after all these years. 1993 until about. I do not have an Australian Amazon link for Ponzinomics, but if you click the link in the de in the in the description of this live stream you're watching now, there is links to the Canadian and American versions of Ponzinomics, both the paperback and audiobook. I they are beyond highly recommended by me. If there's one book you should read regarding your MLM or anti MLM learnings, it is that one. 2005 or 2009, depending on how you want to count it. Um, 2005 is when I found out about the Amway Tools Cam. And I went inactive as far as my upline is concerned, and I decided I would try to <clears throat> implement a clean uh, Amway business. And at, at every turn, Amway Corporation just got in my way. They, they literally making Glenn role play as Mark. <laughs> so fucking funny. Put roadblocks in front of me, you know, barriers, and and finally I just said, hey, you know, I, I'm not a quitter, so I'm going to start acting up. And when I did, they, um, you know, fortunately did terminate my. Dude, it is literally an anime. This is not BFR. This is Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball BFR. Dragon Ball Z BFR. Because every episode, it's like a long... Half the episode is a fucking recap. Last time on Building Fortunes Radio. Well, he's always stupid, Peter. So, back to you, Peter. Well, you know, we started this show 15 years ago. <laughs> Distributorship. My IBO ship, I guess we could say, in 2009. Uh, but during that time period, from 2005 to 2009, I was both trying to figure out how to run a clean Amway business. And I was kind of like semi undercover, right? Because I was inside, but I wasn't uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, so to speak. And so I noticed a lot of different things during that time, uh, knowing that I found out about the tool scheme. I know this, uh, this makes me laugh, but Jimmy Bastian, 100% of people are not familiar with you, Scott and Peter, except the people here, but it's all good. <laughs> I love it. Damn, where things that were said had a very different meaning. Um, you know, once you realize sort of backstory, and when you hear something, you realize before I knew about the tool scam, and now I'm thinking something very different now that I know about it. So that's kind of my background. Um, I, I do consider myself uh, an expert in Amway, um, having several years of experience and, you know, participating in the system. No one else it, considers you that. Um, and, and so I, and I've done a lot of research. Ever since 2005, I've talked to a lot of different people in Amway and other MLMs just to get their perspective. And we've had, I don't know, dozens of them, I think, Peter, on this show over the years, whether it be Amway or other MLMs, to give their perspective of, of their experience. And it's really interesting how similar they are, uh, particularly the more recent ones, because the more recent ones co sort of answer the question of, well, you were in a long time ago, so maybe it's changed. Well, no, because we have people that were in recently, and it's pretty much the same song and dance. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. I'll uh, let you introduce yourself if you'd like to, Peter. Okay, and then in reference to you, Scott, you didn't do Amway full-time, meaning that wasn't your full-time job. You had some other source of income as well? Absolutely. In fact, um, my upline, and I think most uplines in Amway, um, okay. preach to keep your job. They don't want you to quit your job um, because they know that if you're buying the tools and the overpriced products, you need a job. You need something that's going to fund those things in Amway. And the guidance we were given was you've got to have at least twice as much income from Amway compared to your job before you quit your job. Um, I, I think that gives you some leeway to, you know, fall back a little bit and then not be in the total, you know, hurt locker that you would be if, if let's say, you uh, quit your job when you equaled your job in income. Uh, that would be disastrous then if you fell backwards because you'd be in a real tough spot. So, um, yeah, I had a job and... Uh, and Wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid. Stayed in for 15 years, literally. Glenn's got to start getting paid to make appearances on their show soon. Get that bag, Glenn. Straight up, Strawberry. Straight up. Wouldn't it be easier to just get Marco? Yes. 10,000 people listen to this show every week, says Enpaz. Don't talk shit about BFR. So true. An entire college campus sits down to listen to the Scott Johnson radio show. <laughs> that's really the, the recommendation. That's the advice that I think most Amway Upline give to their downline. <clears throat> because, again, 
they want to fuel that tool scam, those, those overpriced tools. Um, and, and there's no better place to do that than from your job. So, yes, I was part-time. So you were college educated. I'm fast forwarding through your future so we can get to some of the meeting, some of the stuff that Glenn wants to cover. But fast forward, you were college educated, then you joined the military, then you uh, worked for a company, consistently working for a company, raised two kids, and did Amway part time. Even though you didn't build a profitable Amway business, you still managed to be able to survive um, growing up your kids. And, and if they ate rice and beans, it was because they wanted to eat rice and beans, not because they had to. So I think, right. that kind of I think that does summarize it very well. And you know, Marco always accuses me of abandoning my kids, as he calls it. Well, I, I, can, I can be sure of this, that there's a lot of corporate executives out there that spent a whole lot less time with their kids than I did. So even though I spent less than I would have liked, it's not like I didn't spend any time and I totally abandoned them. And they, I love this. Go, hold on. They, they ate uh, beans and rice and all that kind of you know, garbage that, that Marco brings up. I love that you said that, Scott Johnson. I really do. This is one of my favorite, favorite sort of defenses of people who try to defend MLMs is they say, instead of, mind you, and, and when I say this, you will start to notice this if you haven't already with Scott and Peter. There is this strategy with MLM people who staunchly defend their MLM where the strategy is to not actually address the criticism that is being given of you directly, but rather to deflect by pointing out how some other company or you know, person is worse. So I'll give you an example. In the new video that I'm working on, you will see one of the top people who has been in the company 35 years talk about how you know, he is ad he's on a podcast addressing one of the criticisms of MLM. And here's what he says. I'm summarizing, but he goes, you know, you know these anti-MLM people, they always criticize the 99% failure rate of MLM. But me and my wife have been married 30 some years and 50% of marriages fail. But am I going to somebody's wedding this Saturday and telling them, hold on, can I say something? You know, this has a 50% chance of failing, right? Or do I go to kids who are playing football and tell them, hey, you know, you only have a 1% chance of making it to the league. So not only is this a false equivalence because marriages while their failure rate is high, it's 50%. Those aren't very good odds. You know, that's a coin flip. Your success in marriage is not dependent on your ability to recruit other married couples so that you can rank up in your marriage and the amount of happiness and success you have in your marriage is directly correlated to how many couples you have in your downline. So it's a complete, uh, it's a complete nonsense comparison. It's, as they say, apples to oranges. But also, even if it wasn't, even if the requirements for being successful in marriage or football was the exact same as for multi-level marketing, well, you're still not addressing the criticism. Imagine you were in court and you were standing before the judge for a crime you did. And the judge said, okay, this is the crime you're accused of doing. How do you defend yourself? What's the evidence, blah, blah, blah. And instead of you actually making your case, you just instead pointed to some other guy and went, well, your honor, that guy did a way worse crime. The judge would look at you and be like, okay, like we're here to talk about you. This is your trial. We're not talking about that other guy. That'll, that, you know, that's the, I have that one booked for tomorrow. I got that trial booked for tomorrow. We're here to talk about you. But because we're not in court, because when I talk to these people, it's on Zoom and they can, you know, hang up if they want to, and because I'm not like a figure of authority to them, they can just weasel their way out of the questions and squirm around the answers. If you want to see, we've been seeing it recently with some of the MLM debates that I've had on here recently, but if you really want to see a great example of this, bro, go watch my video on my channel. I'll tell you the name of it. This is probably the best video I have that shows the mental gymnastics of someone in an MLM. It's called Debate with Primerica Recruiter Gary Cornegay, okay? This is it. One year ago, 75K views, this is the one. In this video, you will see me debate this gentleman who is in Primerica. He called into my live stream at the end of 2021, December 2021. He called into my live stream voluntarily to tell me how big a fan he was of my content, surprisingly enough, because he fights... MLM companies that operate like pyramid schemes in his opinion. 
and yet he checked quite literally every single box for red flags of a pyramid scheme or a person in a pyramid scheme, in my opinion. Never have I ever seen, let alone been a part of, a better example of the type of mental gymnastics, uh, deception, outright lying that I have seen, that I saw from Gary. For example, there's one point where he goes, I've been in the same company 33 years and I've amassed a fortune. Those are his words. Later on in the uh, conversation, I press him about how people in MLMs are always making deceptive earnings claims despite the income disclosure showing that most people earn less than minimum, minimum wage. And he says straight to my face on the Zoom, he goes, well, I never said I make any money. And I said to him, yes, you did. You literally said you've amassed a fortune. That, those were your words. And what's his answer? Oh, well, I don't use money as the determining. Just weasels around it. There's another example too during that uh, debate, if you want to call it that, where um, I talk about how people are recruited to MLMs when they're generally when they're in vulnerable positions in their lives. People don't join MLMs when life is going well, when their finances and their you know life is stable. And he says, well, he tries to push back against that by saying, well, I wasn't in a vulnerable position. I was just broke. And I said, no, no. He says, I wasn't in a vulnerable position. I was just broke as hell. And I said, that is a vulnerable position. Broke as hell? He goes, no, no. You know what his answer was? Not even shitting you. He goes, well, broke is a mindset. Literally moving the goalpost, whatever you want to call it, moving the goalpost, false equivalents, logical fallacy, outright lying, whatever you want to call it. Please, if you have not watched that debate, please go watch that after this because I, I had like a whole well-edited intro and everything too. Like I made it a proper video. And man, that guy, that guy is really like in the sunken place. You ever seen the movie Get Out where she brainwashes the people and so that the you know old white people can like transport their brain into the young black people's bodies? This is the most in the sunken place guy I, you have ever seen. And he has videos where he's like, uh, after they got rid of slavery, jobs became the new slavery, as though jobs didn't exist when slavery also existed. And this is a black man saying this, which is so fucked up. He goes, the Bible says the borrower is the slave to the lender. And think about all the money you owe. Isn't it crazy? We have a credit card company called MasterCard. I'm like, oh my God. You guys got to watch it. This guy is, trust me, he's absolutely, he's in the sunken place. Uh, so sorry for that rant, but I just noticed that Scott is doing that here when he is trying to address my criticism of him being neglectful of his children and his family and his duty as a father and a husband by pursuing Amway for so long. And then now in hindsight, trying to take the high road and appear to be some like authority figure or, or moral high ground. It's like, dude, what is your exp explanation for why you missed out on your kids' childhoods? Oh, because other people in corporate America were worse because other people spent less time with their kids. Okay. So saying a whole lot of nothing. And Paz has five marriages in his downline. Hilarious. Okay. My marriage is based on a uni level marriage plan. So dumb. Gary's cognitive dissonance was next level. A whole nother level. Trust me. Eliza, not a mod yet because of her broke mindset. Hey, you said it, Straw Babies. You said it. All right. Let's continue on. Because it is garbage. And by the way, I'm the only one that he criticizes about that. If he has anyone else on his show that was scammed by an MLM, you know, he has a lot of sympathy and empathy for them. You know why? Because everybody else is a nice person, not a cock like you. Um, and, you know, he doesn't poke fun of anybody else except for me. Now, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm just saying the guy's a hypocrite. That, that's the bottom. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm about to rhyme right now. I'm not a hypocrite. You're an idiot. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> I'm not a hypocrite. You're an idiot. You spent so much time in Amway and will never admit that there's anything wrong with it aside from the tool scam. I guarantee you if Scott Johnson had been making money off of the tool scam, he would love the tool scam. And evidence of that is in the fact that he does a show every Saturday with Peter Mingles, 
who literally runs his own tool scam, selling leads. Again, he's never addressed that criticism either, but let's keep going. Bottom yeah. line, so, yeah. So go ahead. So I'll, I'll fast forward. So again, we're doing this for reference. Brand new people listening in. Scott Johnson is a gentleman. Oh, and other people who were in MLMs usually have some shame attached to it. They don't try to condescend and go on people's platforms and comment sections and be like, well, you should listen to me because blah, 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 and like make enemies. That's that's the difference, Scott. You're an idiot. woman who runs Building Fortunes Radio, the Scott Johnson Radio Show. I own Building Fortunes Radio. I host this, but I have a little bit of a background as well. Now, I know I'm going to be upstaged by Marco, um, but here we go. So I uh, graduated, double major, four-year degree. Is he really doing this now? Chemistry was my major. Decided not to become a doctor because... Why? A doctor? Why are you doing this again, Peter? Because I looked at some of my options and I just said, you know, I'm really not sure if I want to do that. Plus, I was dating a gal that I thought that if I went away for, uh, to college, I might not actually marry. Still married to that same gal, by the way. Um, and as a result of that, decided that, I don't know, better to start looking for something. Joined a management training program with a company called Electrolux. Probably most people would call that a scam because no one ever makes it. And I did. Area vice president, 97 or 96 different offices um, through the Midwest and uh, Promoted myself through the ranks, made over $100,000 a year in that position, multiple times in my early 20s, by the way, Marco. So having said that, I know you're going to upstage me, Marco, when we talk about your income in just a second or two. But then the I like how Scott and Peter, <laughs> every time Scott and Peter try to say something bad about me, they end up like accidentally complimenting me. You know what I mean? Like there have been episodes in the past where they're like, yeah, they'll reference something I have said on the stream about like my dating life. And they'll be like, yeah, so Marco was dating this 21-year-old cheerleader and they were having sex. And then Marco didn't want to get into a relationship. And so the girl was sad. And I'm like, I'm like listening to their retelling of the events, which by the way, were not so cut and dry. And they're like, I'm listening to them tell the story of these events. And I'm like, you realize you're just making me sound fucking lit right now, right? <laughs> Or they'll be like, you know, Marco, he's 27 years old, but he lives in a one bedroom plus den apartment in Edmonton and he hasn't had a job in five years. It's like, where's the, where's the L? Like, where's the, where, where's the bad thing I'm supposed to be listening for here? Decided that we were going to move after a brief stint with a company called P.F. Collier. Decided that, you know, I really want to control my own destiny. That MLM thing looked pretty good. Started as an MLM distributor with a company called Nutrition Dude. for Life specifically. Grew through the ranks as a platinum. I think I was a two-star platinum before I decided that, you know what, these guys have lost their rudder. We um, joined and actually was a partner with an MLM company. So I've owned an MLM company. Um, and I know, Marco, you're going to be, upstage, be able to upstage me with that because of your vast MLM experience. But I owned an MLM company. Simultaneously ran a lead generation company. Been a company owner since I think 19... By the way, saying that I was never in an MLM, so I'm unqualified to talk about it or to like guide people regarding MLM is sort of like saying that because I never smoked cigarettes or smoked crack cocaine, that I don't know anything, like I don't know that it's bad. I can't say that it's bad. You know, some people really like cigarettes and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, it is an objective fact. Using every measurable metric that exists, MLM is a bad deal. It is a scam. So what are you talking about? 98, officially on the book since 2022, when we did an LLC, but the, uh, I'm sorry, 20, 2002. So it's been a long time. Somewhat over Great comment, Gordis. I could have been a doctor, but I wanted to make a real difference, so I sold vacuums. Do you hear yourself, Peter? <laughs> Stupid, Peter. <laughs> Peter, hey, there's 218 people watching at this moment. Peter, I know you're probably watching the replay of this, if not watching it live. Go ahead, drop a one in the chat if you think Peter is stupid. Since Peter thinks this is my, oh, only me. Go ahead. I know this will make him mad. Over 20 years as a small business owner. So as a small business owner in the lead generation business, working as a company owner, dealing with attorneys, I also decided I was going to join the trade association um, and became executive education person for the uh, Distributor Rights Association. Then eventually became president of that and then uh, joined the MLMAA. I'm sorry. We did join the MLMAA. Uh, I'm a board member of that, advisory board member of the DSWA, the Direct Selling Women Alliance, and then became the president of the... A lot of ones in the chat, Peter. ...network marketing professionals until I ceremoniously left that business, was terminated through the A&MP. Interesting conversation. you got to hear that one. But I left because they lost their focus and, uh, in essence, became the president of that trade association. Wait, you left because they lost their focus or you were terminated? as well before I left. Then got frustrated, decided to build Building Forces Radio, still run my own company, still deal with a boatload of people in the MLM industry, and that's a little bit about my background. Been a uh, uh, criminal witness for uh, people, been spoken to people from the FTC zillions of times uh, relative to other things, defended people in MLM before as well. So there's a little bit about my background. So uh, we left so the best for last. Peter, 
you know, you mentioned lead generation, and I want to comment on that because Marco and his goons think that if, if you're in the lead generation business, you're, you're running a scam, and, yes. and that is not true. There's a lot of non-MLM businesses that also – hire lead generation companies to find leads for them, you know, whether it be insurance or uh, investments, there's, there's all kinds of non MLM businesses that use leads. And the reason that Amway's tool business is a scam is that the upline pretend that they made their success from Amway, not from the tool scam. And that's what makes it a scam is the fact that nobody is told, you know, whether it be the downline or the prospects that, Oh, by the way, we make most of our profit from the tools, not from Amway. They're, they're never told that. And that's what makes it a scam. It's not the making of the money. It's the fact that they lie about where their money comes right, so from. Let's not worry about Amway on this call. So let's worry oh. about the Marco thing. But it, I'm glad oh. you brought up what you just So said. it's only a lie. So hold on. He ha we have it on record. Scott Johnson saying that the Amway tool scam is only a scam because they lie about where their money comes from. They're selling the tools, the books and tapes and events, but they're saying that their money comes from their earnings from the Amway compensation plan. That's what makes it a scam? Forgive me, Scott, I thought this whole time you thought the Amway tool scam was a scam because you're selling people basically the same repackaged motivational mindless babble in different forms and can, telling them that they, they need to have it in order to be successful and effectively brainwashing them and you know indoctrinating them into a cult of tools. I thought that was what made it a scam. Now it's only a scam because they don't mention where they get it from? Okay, again, moving the goalpost because it exemplifies so i want to speak slowly here so people can understand it exemplifies marco not understanding many things about business you don't know a dick about business literally bro you guys but between betwixt the both of you neither of you have ever given me an example of one thing where you had actual business experience in scott's case he talks about his glowing school record and being six foot five and then he talks about being in the Navy where everything is structured for you. It's rigid. That is not, you know, sure, it was a job, but that was not you having your own business. Neither was you being in Amway. Now he's like, uh, he, if I remember correctly, Scott does like uh, heating, heating for homes or heating or electric, something like that, like a trade. So now maybe he has some experience in business uh, being a tradesman. But dude, you're 60 years old. Uh, Peter, same thing with you. All those, all those credentials you just get named make you seem more stupid the more you talk. You, you keep talking, you bury yourself. Yeah, I could have got, gone to medical school to be a doctor, but I, rad, I would rather would have joined MLM. Like, what the? Do you hear yourself, bro? What the fuck are you talking about? So when he thinks sleep generation is a scam, it's because he doesn't understand many things about business, um, which we might as well use that as a segue into Glenn. Think about this. When it comes to lead generation, think about this. Lead generation, let's say the leads are legitimate, right? Let's say you're actually paying for contact information for people who would actually follow through, right? It's not just a dead number. Okay, now what are you going to use those lead leads for? Presumably direct sales, right? But we already know that direct sales is, has gone away because of obsolescence. It's obsolete. It doesn't exist anymore. We have better ways. Just like Blockbuster is obsolete because we have Netflix. We've removed the middleman of Blockbuster. Now we don't have to go to the physical store and rent the DVD or the VHS in order to watch a movie. We can click one button and watch Netflix. Hence, Blockbuster's demise. Direct selling, the same thing has happened. Amazon exists. Walmart exists. Target exists. There's grocery stores in every major city, town, you name it. Even some small towns have a whole fucking Walmart in them. So this idea that you would buy leads in order to sell retail products is a myth because you would be buying essentially the keys to a chest that is completely empty. There's no, there's no market there. It's not a business anymore. So let's look at it from a different angle. Maybe the leads are for people who want to become distributors so you can recruit. Okay, but even that business model of multi-level marketing, recruiting, 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 five times, five times, five times, five, is mathematically impossible and 99% of people each year end up losing. Of the existing, I, I add the each year part because people, especially anti-MLM creators, misunderstand and misuse this term of 99% of people lose. 
99% of people lose when you say that. It makes it sound as though throughout the course of one's career in MLM, they will lose. This is incorrect. It's correct, but it's also too generous. In one calendar year, 99% of people will lose. In, from year one to two, a huge batch of that losing 99 will leave because they have to go back into the workforce and get money. They can't keep investing into this, losing money and racking up debt forever. So most of them will quit reasonably to go get a job. They will be replaced in year two by a new crop of recruits who in year two, they will lose money. So let's say there's 100 people in an MLM company just for you know sim simplicity, right? 100 people. 99 of them lose. So that means in year one, one person made money, the guy at the very tippy top, right? So now year two, let's say 60 of the bottom 99 leave and they're replaced. Year two, 99 people lose. After year one and two, still one guy has made money and now 198 people, 99 from year one, 99 from year two, have lost money. Year three, year four, year five. By year five, you have 495 people who have lost money and one person who has made money. So now the loss rates are not one over 99, which would be 1%. The loss rates are one over 495, which would be 0.002%. That's over five years. Think of a company like Amway, because Scott loves to talk about Amway. They have been around, what, 40, 50 more years? We're going on 100 years of MLM being a thing in society. Neutralite, the very first MLM, which the founders of Amway uh, initially joined as distributors before branching off and starting the American way, later became Amway. That company, Neutralite, was started in the 30s, 1930s. It's 2023, bro. We're still talking about this. <laughs> so this 99% loss rate is grossly misunderstood. But let me bring it back to Scott and Peter. Either you are selling leads for a retail opportunity which does not exist because direct sales doesn't exist and multi-level marketing as a whole makes up less than 1% of the annual retail in North America every year. It's negligible. It's virtually non-existent. Or you are selling leads for people who, are, who want to become distributors supposedly and enter a ecosystem where 99% of them will lose every single year. Either way, Peter, what you are doing is a scam. <laughs> Clip that five minute thing and somebody send it to Peter as, as the key explanation, the key thing that I want answered, the key explanation as to why what he is doing is a scam, a tool scam specifically. Also, add this. Peter, I want to ask you a question. You say you hired and fired yourself three separate times from Amway. Please explain that. How is it that you quit and then rejoined Amway three times? What was it that you missed the first time that made you want to go back? And then what was it that made you quit again? And then what was it that you missed that made you want to go back again and then quit again? For a guy who claims to be so intelligent and such an expert, it seems like a very... Uh, questionable thing that you rejoined and quit Amway three separate times, especially when on the last episode with Glenn, you had the audacity from your stupid little fucking mouth to tell Glenn that if you sat down with his dad, who has been chasing the Amway dream for 20 years and losing money, you had the audacity to say to him that if you sat down with his dad, you could straighten him out in a few minutes and help him recruit a whole bunch of people. Well, if that's the case, then how come you yourself had to quit and rejoin Amway three separate times. If you're such a pro at recruiting, what's the deal? Back to this bullshit. So Glenn, I need you to kind of give us Marco's background in a similar situation, because you know everything about him, because like you said, you know 98% about Marco. So give no, us his I, background. I, I, I agree with 98% of what he says. Oh, okay. Yeah, so on, well, we'll help fill in the gaps. So Marco's education level? I must say, I, I, what I know about Marco is that he was a man who was hurt by an MLM because the MLM cost him his best friend. 
Um, he has been dedicated that's himself that's to. That's a description of his story. Let's talk about his credentials. Yep. Marco's education background will help you fill out less than a year of college. So less than one year. Don't even know if he finished his first year of college. I did finish. I went to one year of university, Grant McEwen University here in Edmonton, did general studies, uh, mostly business related stuff, marketing, economics 101, enough business study to be able to understand basic economic concepts like supply and demand and know that it is completely senseless for you to recruit an endless chain of recruits, which would saturate the market and cannibalize your own potential sales. Okay. How many MLMs has Marco ever been a distributor from? Marco was smart enough to reject the MLM when it was offered to him. So I, I, I would say that makes him probably smarter than someone who's... Okay, so we call that zero. Cause you would, so you would call me stupid because I was an MLM company owner? I, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying Marco saw it was like, No, no, what did you just say? What did yeah. you just say? I was not only a distributor, I was a company owner. So that means I must okay. be multiple times stupider than Marco. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think to be a, the owner of an MLM would actually make you very smart. These guys tend to be very, very, the owners of the MLM companies are very, very intelligent. How about when I was, Peace out, Aaron. Um, how about when I was a successful distributor? Was I stupid um, then? Were you a, a successful I'm distributor? Clarify, Mal, Glenn is my lawyer and Scott Johnson, or Peter is giving like the most uh, scathing cross-examination. We're trying to clarify your wiggle room for answering a direct question about Marco. You're trying to defend that he had never had any, <laughs> Marco has no MLM experience. Yes, sir. Listen to what's going on right now. Peter is trying to discredit me and disqualify my opinion because I don't have experience being in an MLM. Again, it's like a person who's defending cigarettes or the cigarette industry trying to say, Marco doesn't know what he's talking about because he's never even smoked cigarettes to be telling people it's so bad. Do I need to have smoked cigarettes in order to be able to read reports and hear personal testimony of what it's done to people and see documented evidence of how it hurts people and read the label on the box that says it's bad for you. The only difference there is MLM doesn't have a label on the box, unfortunately. It doesn't provide that sort of transparent disclosure. Um, but if you read their income disclosure, you would see basically the same thing. Yes or no? As a distributor. Has he ever bought a sales kit? I think Peter might cry, meltdown incoming, literally. Correct. Okay, that's all we need. We don't need the story. We'll get to the story later. Okay, so then if he was never a distributor, he could never have been a company owner. Okay, so what trade associations was Marco associated with? Trade associations was he associated with? Yeah. So, um, I would have thought at the um, anti-MLM conference that, yeah, okay, that's not it. Yes, well, he, invited, right. he, he, invited him, he invited himself to be a speaker at the MLM conference. <laughs> he was not invited. He invited himself. He what? As well. So, so far, Marco's... Because, I was invited. Bill invited me. Yeah, obviously, wanted him to be there. If, if they didn't want him there, he wouldn't have been there. Exactly. Well, he, spoke, he, would... right, he, invited, he invited himself. So he invites himself yeah, to an MLM conference. You're right. He got there. He got there. He got a chance to speak. We'll talk about that in a second. You guys want so to hold on, there, hold on one second. No, we're just we're stating we're stating facts. We're stating facts first, okay. then we're going to go through your arguments. Yeah. So Marco has no MLM experience, never associated with any trade associations, invited himself to his own anti-MLM conference. To his credit, he's actually been able to speak in the anti-MLM conference, and that's why we're here today. So that gives people a little bit about the background of experience level and business knowledge. Oh, how many companies has Marco owned? Traditional or not traditional companies? Traditional or not traditional? My understanding is he's a YouTuber and a very successful. Yeah, Peter, I, I crashed the MLM conference and they just let me speak for 20 minutes. Successful YouTuber at that. Well, we, we discussed that before about successful YouTubers. You must have missed our last conference. He, he averages about 300 likes. I guess maybe <laughs> it depends on your definition. <laughs> Averaging 300 likes, I'm not sure if that's a successful YouTuber if he does it full time. I know lots of, got, lots sorry, of other got, people get this in it. He's got 60,000 so, YouTube subscribers. Sorry, let me speak. Um, he's got 60,000 YouTube so subscribers. There's a lot of very intelligent people with YouTube channels who have far less than 60,000 subscribers. Okay, good. I'm glad okay. you admitted that. I'm okay, glad good. You admitted that. I'm glad you admitted like, that. Okay, good. Peter, you're a, such a pussy, bro. I hope I meet you in person one day so I can spank you on the bottom and wash your mouth out with soap. So people with less subscribers could be also considered successful. Thank you. Okay, so back to Marco. How many traditional businesses has Marco owned? My understanding how many is people, Marco... How many Dude, imagine this, cutting off a guy who's your guest on your show, not even letting him answer, which you're asking him questions about a completely different person, mind you. You're cutting a guy off who is your guest in his answers about a completely different guy who's not even there. Like, bro, this man is crazy. I don't think anything. He's, he's, he's a successful okay. YouTuber, which is why I'm a fan of his. So he's never been a business owner. How many people do you think he has on his payroll? How many people do you think he's ever been responsible for? Probably zero. 
Probably none. Okay, so he's never had to worry about payroll. That's a flex on my part that I'm able to be a full-time YouTuber without having to have a team of people helping me generate the income. That's a flex on my part. Streamlabs link in the chat. You guys are my team. <laughs> he's, he's, this is uh, some of the, the, the documentation, if you will, this, the facts about Marco and his credibility about understanding a business. That's when he says stuff about lead generation, but I'm going to stop there because we just wanted to lay out the credibility. Well, Peter, also, also, Peter, also, Peter and Scott, you guys also say that I'm a big-time cocaine dealer or that I was or that I am. How could I have become a big-time cocaine dealer if I wasn't at least a little bit good at business? So which is it? But for those people listening in, for those people listening in, let me make one point, though. Let me make one point though about that. Sure. You don't need a business degree. You don't need to be a genius to see that if a, if a business has a 99 point something percent yep. rate, there's a massive, massive problem and it's a fraud and it's a con. So whether Marco has been to Harvard and he spent eight years at university or college or spent no time there at all, I mean, I, I suppose that 12 years at what, level, at what level, I have a question for you. At what level yeah. from 99.7 does it become a successful story? Is it 98.7? Is it 96.7? I would say any, any, I would say anything that's got less than a ten, and anything that's got less than fifty percent, I would consider a failure. If I was looking to buy a franchise, and the failure rate was more than fifty percent, I wouldn't touch it. Great point made by Glenn. Score one for Glenn, dude. Glenn is on a a, a war path tonight, effortlessly, by the way, parrying every attack by Peter and just chopping him down with every response. If if you were to go buy a McDonald's franchise. And I'm using that example because that's actually the favorite example used by people in MLM. For some reason, people who promote MLMs seem to think there are only two career paths in life, flipping burgers at McDonald's or joining their MLM company. McDonald's specifically is always, always, always the example they use because it is, for whatever reason, uh, the go-to thing to insult somebody with career-wise, when you say you work at McDonald's, which I think is stupid because there needs to be people who work at McDonald's. And from what, what I understand, you can actually learn a lot and they have a pretty smooth business. I judge no person ever who has worked at a fast food establishment. I would not judge a person or their intelligence based off that. As a matter of fact, I think that if you're a person who goes to service-based establishments, whether it's a fast food restaurant or a fine dining restaurant, and you don't respect and appreciate the people who work there, you are a piece of shit. I think everybody would be humbled to work a job like that at least once in their life. I'm grateful for the experience that I had mopping floors and doing dishes and chopping cucumbers at my dad's restaurant for years from the time I was 16 to probably 19, 20. Yeah, 19, I would say. I, I, I was grateful to do stuff like that because you build a lot of character and learn a lot about yourself and what you're capable of when you actually do some hard work, okay? Anyways, I'm using this example because like Glenn says here, if you were to go buy a franchise and it had a 50% success rate, you probably wouldn't bank on that. That's like flipping a coin, 50%? That's not good. That's not good. Even the most volatile businesses, let's check this out. Restaurant failure rate. Restaurants are notoriously hard businesses. Here we go. This is from National Restaurant Association. Estimates a 20% success rate for all restaurants. About 60% of restaurants fail in their first year of operation and 80% fail within five years of opening. 60 to 80%. 60 in the first year, 80% in five years. So Glenn is actually being pretty generous here with him saying, by saying if, if it had a 50% success or loss rate that he would consider it a bad deal. I think this is extremely generous of Glenn because you're offering Peter uh, an out essentially by saying 50% and MLM loss rates are 99.7% annual, annual, okay? So let's compare this with a McDonald's franchise. If you went to go buy a McDonald's franchise and they told you you had a 50% chance of failure, you probably wouldn't buy it. And thankfully, I think with McDonald's, you probably have a much higher chance of success than 50% because one, one McDonald's is a well-documented, successful company in pretty much any market that it goes. McDonald's is always, you know, always make money. They always make money. Secondly, it is in the best interest of you as the franchisee, as well as McDonald's Corporation, 
to not open up two McDonald's locations next door to each other. When it comes to franchises, arguably the number one most important factor in determining where and when to open one is location. Because you wouldn't want to cannibalize your own sales. It's okay if a Burger King is right next door because that's your competition. That's competition. But when you have a McDonald's next to a McDonald's, which would never happen, you're cannibalizing yourself. So these are things that go into uh, deciding both on the part of the franchisee and the, the corporation themselves. Plus, you have the whole infrastructure of McDonald's at your, at your disposal to help you to run a successful business. Thank you, Amanda Del Rey. As a native Texan, the cowboy hat is doing things for me. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda Del Rey. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Another thing with opening a McDonald's franchise is you get disclosure. You get to look at documents that say, hey, here are the McDonald's locations that are close to closest in proximity to your locations. Here's how much they made last year. Here's how well they do. Here's how much you can expect to make. Here's how much the overhead is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. MLM, this is not the case. So it's really funny that Peter is asking these questions. I don't even think he considered these questions or like thought of these questions before asking them. And this is, by the way, Gary Cornegay in my Primerica debate with him at the end of 2021, he asked me the same thing. Well, how, what percent of people would have to succeed in order for you not to look at it like a scam? Well, isn't that a very interesting quagmire conundrum of a question to throw at me? Because we're talking about a business that has 99% failure rate. That's not even at that point when it's 99%, that's not even a failure rate. That means that the system is working exactly as it's designed to work. That is actually a 99% success rate in a fucked up way if you think about it because the profits of the top 1% equal the losses of the 99%. They call it profits, but I look at that as damages. The profits of the 1% are the damages of the 99%. So very interesting question. Let's see how Peter responds to this uh, you know, answer of 50%. You know, you don't need to go to university. You don't need to be highly educated to know that if a business is failing more than half the time, that's a very, very risky investment. More than 50%, that's risky. And business people don't touch investments with a more than 50% um, risk rate. So unless there's a massive, massive return. You know, but a well, keep in mind that keep in no, mind no, that no, MLM no. is a very, very low bar. It doesn't take hardly any money to join an MLM, so it's very easy right. to enter. You know, almost and what? So because it's cheap to enter it, we should ignore the loss rates? Anybody no, could enter an MLM. Well, any, anyone can buy, get in, can buy a Hold on, I don't want to get into the weeds yet. I was just, I was just asking, because he had mentioned the 99.7. I wanted a kind of a benchmark for there. So let's go yeah. through, uh, we went through credentials. Marco has none, or very few. He's a YouTuber. He gets a chance to talk on YouTube and beg for money. So yeah, I'm a YouTuber. One of the actual hardest things to make money at and to do consistently, especially by yourself with nobody holding you accountable or helping you uh, on a full-time basis, one of the most sought-after jobs, I think it is the most sought-after career for young people, like for kids, is being a YouTuber. I literally think that is true. Let me see if I can find a source. Most desired job for kids. Top, here we go, from tubefilter.com. The top one that comes up. The top 10 jobs kids want, per the first choice study, are as follows. YouTuber, blogger, vlogger, musician, actor, filmmaker. Okay, so usually it's something in the arts, entertainment, whatever. But it's not hard to imagine. If you have children in your life, cousins, nieces, nephews, you know that they want to be YouTubers. My nieces also are obsessed with YouTube and the YouTubers they watch. And... uh you know, they make their own like little videos with their Barbies and stuff like that. So uh, anyways, again, I have no credibility. I know we're, I know we're, Clint, I know he's listening. So we're just kind of poking at him a little bit. So don't worry about defending us when we poke at him. Okay. Let's poke at his real arguments. So you have six points that you want to bring up. So yeah. I'll let oh, you so do most is of the This is all about the speech. This is about the speech, yeah? We're not talking about Marco in general or his background Correct. or his history. Correct. 
or the MLM model. Okay. That's good. All right. But even this is the, uh, even the speech. Even people say smart things every once in a while. Oh, there you go. Okay. So go ahead. All right. So his first point was about the fact that his friend, he lost a friend because of the fact that he pointed out some of the things that were wrong with the MLM business model. Damn, okay, so they're actually talking about the conference. Let's go. And his friend was of the view that, well, his friend had been told. He said, I knew you were going to, to do this. I knew you were going to say that. Now, I think it's very interesting where that comes from. There was, Dexter Yeager wrote a book. And it what was a called, bad dog. Don't let anyone steal your dream. Now, the person that told Marco's friends I'm warning you now, a lot of, there's a lot of negative dream stealers out there who are going to try and steal your dream. That wasn't his idea. He is copying the same tactics that Dexter Yeager was using 40 and 50 years ago. You know that everyone's going to, everyone who you tell about, I'm in this MLM business, they're going to talk it down. They're going to say 99% of people fail. Therefore, what you do is you demonize the people who criticize the business and you say, stay away from those people. Those people are bad news. They're going to drag you down. They're, they're jealous of you. They're dream stealers. They're trying to steal your dream. Um, so I can relate to that because the things that Marco's friend said to him are things that my father has said to me. Me and my dad had a massive falling out because his upline was telling him, Glenn is trying to steal your dream. He's dragging you down. The reason you're not a diamond is because of his negativity. So I can absolutely relate to what Marco said because I've dealt with it firsthand Marco dealt with it for a short period of time. I've dealt with this for over two decades. Can I, in, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt yep. only be, only because when you um, mentioned you wanted to talk about Marco's stuff, you thought it was a brilliant presentation. It and was brilliant. I, in this regard, your example mm -hmm. with his friend, I am in agreement with anybody, whether it's you, Marco, or anybody else that when they get into that lost relationship kind of conversation, you know, where you told me you were going to steal their dreams and stuff like that, that's a challenge in MLM, direct sales. Anytime anybody's trying to do something, you run across that. So that's a common thing. If we needed a check mark of agreement, at least for me, I can't speak for Scott, I'm in agreement. Okay, so first off, the very first point they brought up about the conference, my very first talking point, they both agree with. Already, I'm shocked. So that so point would be. If I could put my if I could put my two cents in, it, it's what's called confirmation bias. So the upline is very smart in an evil way because they do tell their downline. Now you're going to find people that are against this and they won't join and they'll criticize you. And when that happens, those are losers. Those are quitters. Those are people that just don't see it. You know, they'll they'll say all those kinds of things. Uh, and then when it actually happens to you, then you actually have more belief in your upline because what they told you would come true came true. And, and so it is a very evil genius type thing. And I, I agree with Peter. It's a problem. And it's, it's just something that, uh, you know, the upline does to, again, to convince the person that they're doing the right thing, even though your upline is lying through their teeth. Um, but that, now, I, I agree with Peter and Glenn on that. that. It's a bad thing, yeah. But, but I have to share with you this. So this is a personal story, and I'm going to stop talking about personal stories, but it is a personal story specific about this. On my job interview with Electrolux, the management training career, um, the branch manager, his name is Joe, asked me at, somewhere during the interview, mostly towards the end of the interview, he says, "Who? this is the, specifically what he said, who are you going to talk to? about this opportunity when you go home. And I felt that was a really awkward question for me. I'm like, and I, I didn't know this guy before this interview, but during the interview, he had built some confidence in me. And I said, I don't know, Joe, that's kind of a weird question, but um, I'm gonna talk to my mom and my dad, definitely. My girlfriend, for sure. You know, probably Can't believe they all three are agree in agreement on the same point with me, crazy. Some of my friends. And then he said to me, what would you do if they told you not to do this? I'm John Quinones from What Would You Do? I'm Peter Mingles from What Would... I'm Peter Mingles from What Would You Do? <laughs> the speech pattern. Pam says, Peter interrupts when he knows Glenn is right. So true. And I, and I said, Joe, this is kind of weird. It's getting a little bit awkward here in this interview. 
why would they tell me not to do this? And because, you know, what is it about this? That Silicon Valley says, tell Peter and Scott to start vlogging. They talk so much shit about you by uh, they talk so much shit about you YouTubing, but they wouldn't pull up. But they wouldn't pull even one tenth of your views besides goons flaming them. So true. That's something I shouldn't be doing. And he says, well, I don't know, Peter. I mean, you've been sitting here in this interview, here in this whole presentation. Now, way back then, you could show paychecks and you could. Yeah, also great. Uh, glad you pointed that out, Enpaz. Agreeing with Peter. Scott agrees with Peter when it was Glenn's point, which was also my point. But, of course, Scott wouldn't say he agrees with Glenn agreeing with me, nor would Scott say he agrees with me. So he'll just say that he agrees with Peter agreeing with Glenn agreeing with me. He was in his office, and there wasn't the same – there probably still was the same regulations, but nobody was listening. So he told me about, you know, the opportunity and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, laid it out. He says, there's nothing. Everything I've told you is exactly the way it works. You work your way up in sales, you blah, 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 you do this, all this sort of stuff. And he says, but they're not here on the interview, and I just wanted to know what will happen if you go home and they tell you not to do it, not to do this. And I said, well, they're not here on the interview, Joe. Like, you know, I might not have the answers that they need, but... Also, Sila Jane is correct. What Peter, what Scott described was not confirmation bias. He was talking about, he explained priming people for opposing views and having their guard up, not confirmation bias. And she puts the definition here. Confirmation bias is our tendency to cherry pick information that confirms our existing beliefs or, or ideas. What they are doing is they're trying to use inception mind control by putting the idea in your head that others will try to dream steal. It is not until that you hear the person trying to dream steal that your confirmation bias has kicked in. Or rather, when somebody reiterates to you the stuff you've heard in the motivational rallies, that would be when your confirmation bias kicks in. I mean, I trust you, and not for, that, not for nothing, Joe, but go home and they tell you not to do it. Let me rewind that. Who, who are we touching? Not to do this. And I said, well, they're not here on the interview, Joe. Like, you know, I might not have the answers that they need, but, I mean, I trust you, and not for, that, not for nothing, Joe. Oh, I trust you, not I touched you. Stupid. But not only do I trust you, but I'm not... Trickle-down agreement. I'm not stupid. If I find out that they're right, and you lied, I'm out of here. You are stupid. What's your incentive to do this? I mean, I'm not stupid. I mean, I remember, I'm 22 years old at the time, physically fit, I probably could have kicked his ass. Of course, you, you can kick everyone's ass, Peter. Bad Dog says, I put it in the Discord today. Join the Discord, by the way, if you're not in there. Link is in the chat. I just posted it. Uh, 13 years, 52 followers, almost 11,000 total shows with 233 total listens for an average of 21 listens a show for 13 years. 13 years ago, I was 14 years old, bro. What the fuck have y'all been doing this, for this whole time? Marco has single videos with more views than their whole, <laughs> than their whole 13 years existence. So true. So the reality was, is like, I'm not, and I'm a New York guy, and he's a New York guy too, so we're having conversations. I'm like, you know, what are we going to do here, Joe? Are we going to drag my ass into this thing, and, and, and it's a freaking scam? So I don't think so. I mean, I trust you. And if, I, and if you do something I don't trust you, I'll leave, like, real fast. And, um, you know, depending on how it happens. I'm a New York guy. Real fact. You know, I'm a New York guy. I could have probably kicked his ass. Real fact. I don't know if you want to be around. So when I went home, this is a true story. When I went home, and I told my mom, what the management training opportunity was, she said, oh, that's really nice, but what's the name of the company? And I did not remember. I did not remember because it didn't matter to me. If he ever mentioned the name, I didn't, I didn't hear it. So she, I said, Mom, I think it begins with an E. And, um, and she says, was it you know, something? And I don't even remember the choices she gave me. Then at the end, she says, no. This is the way she said it. No, it wasn't Electrolux. And remember, I didn't know what Electrolux was. So I said, yeah, that's the one. And she says, that's bullshit. They're gonna, this, you're not joining. You can't join. You don't go back for the second interview tonight. None of that sort of stuff. You're not doing that. Bad dog. I'm a New York guy and in pretty good shape. I dare Peter to square off with me. Oh, my God. I would love, I'd pay to see it. Imagine how Scott and Peter would make their YouTube intros. Hey, guys. What's up? Welcome back. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back. And don't forget to smash the like button. And... <laughs> smash the like. I fired. Don't forget to smash the likes. I fired and hired myself three times and joined the Navy. And I hate game. Oh, my goodness, man. So, short story. I stayed, I went, Joe didn't lie. I mean, there's a lot of challenges. Joe didn't lie, and I became an area vice president. So I'm the wrong guy to say, you know, when somebody is not trying to hide, there's the right way to do it, which is the way Joe did it, and then there's the Amway way to do it, which is the wrong way to do it. I'll tell you what, that would be like me saying my parents always told me not to gamble, and then I bought a lottery ticket and I won a million dollars. 
therefore my parents were wrong. I mean, statistically, if you buy lottery tickets, you're going to lose. So it's not bad yeah, advice. But- Such a great point. In case you missed it, Glenn is saying, because you had success in your MLM doesn't mean anything, Peter. If my parents told me, don't gamble, but then I went and gambled and made money, does that mean that I disproved my parents and that their advice wasn't good? No, I got lucky. Or in the case of MLM, you don't get lucky. You just have to be willing to deceive people at scale. Again, Peter, why did you hire and fire yourself three times? I, to tell I did what Joe, It's not like that at all because I did what Joe told me to do and I became an area vice president. Okay. It, it, your cool. analogies are flawed. You're, you're, you're trying to reach for an analogy that's flawed. We're talking I, about I apples to apples. I did, I did what Joe told me to do and I became an area vice president. That's impossible to argue with. I did what Joe yeah. told me. I followed the system. Jimmy says his stance is most MLMs do it the wrong way, but his source of income is selling leads to most MLMs. Exactly. Make it make sense. I mean, I, I, I'm some people ignore, ignore the advice of their parents and they, and they gamble and they win. That doesn't make, mean the parents' advice to not gamble is bad because on average, if you gamble, you will lose. Sometimes you will win, but on average, you will lose. Some, Get them, Glenn. Have become wealthy. Get them. All right, so you're let's let's be on that because now we're playing word games. We're playing word games. Well, we're we're gonna love this. No way, Peter. You are such a fucking pussy, Peter Mangles. Well, let's move beyond that now because now we're playing word games. Excuse me? Playing word games? Bro, you have lost. Your little ant brain has lost to a greater logic. A smarter person has come in and shown you the error of your ways and proved to you with a rock solid analogy that your success in MLM doesn't mean anything for you trying to legitimize it. Glenn's point is 100% the perfect rebuttal. If I tell my kid, don't gamble, and then they went and made money gambling, does that mean that my advice wasn't good? No. And immediately, okay, let's move on. Uh, We're playing word games. Peter, look, Peter, look in my eyes. Peter, you are a pussy. Put a one in the chat if you think Peter Mingles is an absolute pussy. Marco's going to sit there and jerk off with we're, let, we're, let me make, it, we're let me, let me make another. Marco's going to take we're back and down. Go ahead. Let me make another. Well, now. Let me rewind. Playing the water. Right, so you're trying, let's let's, let's be on that because now we're playing word games. We're playing word games. Marco's well, going to love this. Let me, Marco's going to sit yeah, there and jerk off with. We're, Marco's going to sit there and jerk off with this. Yeah, with you losing. Yeah, you're right. Let, we're, let me we're, make it. We're playing let me, word let games. Let me make another. Marco's going to take we're let, back and down. Go ahead. Let me make another so analogy that has nothing to do with scams. Okay, if if you had told me when I was in high school how hard I would have to work to get an electrical engineering degree, I may have said, that's too hard. If you had told me how hard I would work in the Navy doing the nuclear power business, I may not have gotten in the program. So even if there's no scam involved, if, if you're told everything up front, you might not do something that would turn out to be a very good opportunity. So just taking away the whole scam environment, it's not evil to withhold information that might be detrimental. Um, you know, you don't have to tell about? somebody everything about everything for them to make a decision. You need to give them enough information that's truthful and honest and then see if they're up to it. Um, and so I, I just see that whole argument of, well, you know, well, we you didn't uh, provide all the enemies. information. Friendly enemies I, I, I are people that want the best for you. So let's move beyond. Wait a minute. So let me understand. <laughs> good night to everyone except Peter. Yeah, thank you, Strawberries. Have a good night. So let me let me understand this. Now Scott is jumping in here, trying to use the. Uh, basically, it's a variation of this argument. It's a false equivalence that gets brought up. Where uh, again, Gary Cornegay did this in a video that I watched, uh, an interview of his recently, where he goes, "Well." Imagine I went to kids that played that were playing football and told them only 1% of uh you know you guys are going to make it into the league into the NFL or NBA or whatever. Uh should I do that? No, it's going to take a lot of hard work and whatever. This is the idea and, and Scott's uh, stupid example with the engineering degree. You guys are comparing something where your level of effort actually is a factor in determining success. You're comparing that 
with MLM, something where the losers are already for, you know, more or less predetermined because unless you are starting the company, you're not in early enough to be reaping the rewards. You know what I mean? And this is where the sort of five by five by five or three by three by three comes in because unless you're near the top of the chain, the, the bottom layer of people is always going to be the people who are putting money in but never actually getting to the point where they recruit even a single person. So do you think that when you join a company, an MLM company like Amway that's been around for 50 plus years, do you really think that you're, like you have to recognize you're already at the bottom. The saturation has already happened. Anywho, maybe that's why he fired and hired himself three times. On that one because that's the one no, we I both agree on. Well, I, don't want to, I don't want to get stuck in the well, woods yeah. from the ones we agree on. Well, one one yeah. final thing on that. I, I would argue that it's very, very rare if you go for a job interview when they downplay and they, and they uh, try and Joe was exceptional. Make out I'm not doubting that. Joe was, Joe uh, was one of a kind. Not doubting it. He did it the right example, way. The, the example you gave, though, um, let's compare if you if you go if you if you're interested in buying a McDonald's or a Subway franchise. Um, when you're, you're talking to the, the salesperson about buying this franchise, I guarantee you they never say people are going to try and talk you out of buying this McDonald's and this Subway franchise because they're negative losers, they're dream stealers, yes. they're jealous of you, they don't want you to become a business owner, they want you to work at job, a yes. job broke for life. That doesn't happen in normal business. This, those sort of lines about your family and negative losers and they're jealous of you when they're trying to steal your dream, that only happens in the MLM industry. Yes! Glenn with another fire bar of an example. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> yes, Glenn. So true. People in MLM will tell you Oh, anyone who tries to talk you out of this, it's because they're a dream stealer. They don't want to see you win. They're just like everyone else. They have an employee mindset, broke mindset, J-O-B, journey of the broke. They don't even know what scam means. Scam, S-C-A-M, still cooking at McDonald's, still chilling at mom's, still confused about money. All these slick things. But if you were to go start a hair salon or a car detailing business or a restaurant or buy a franchise, nobody would say that to you. Nobody would say that to you. Why? Why do they do it in MLM? This is a, go read Steve Hassan's book, Combating Cult Mind Control, and then read his book, Freedom of Mind, okay? This is called thought stopping. They have to stop you, stop you and inhibit your critical thinking prior to you going and hearing inevitable objections from people who have your best interests at heart. So that by the time you hear those objections, you are already primed and like, it's like a second nature trigger that gets pushed and you go, oh, I know why you're saying this because you don't, it's like, bro, if you're a legitimate business, you'll stand up to criticism and you'll be able to you know, poke holes in that criticism and defeat it with logic and rationale every time, if you're legitimate. You also, also legitimate businesses don't need to sort of butter you up in this way and tell you things like that. I mean, I've never had a job interview in my life where they're like, just so you know, before you start working at this restaurant as a waiter, you need to know that there are going to be people in your life who tell you that this is a scam and you shouldn't do it and blah. Never in my life, never in my life, never in anyone's life, as a matter of fact, only in MLM. Glenn, so much respect. Glenn, you are a pimp. And we, we and we agree we yeah. we agree that MLM when done bad is done really bad. So Deflection. Bad dog says the gym is a perfect example of how hard work pays off and it's not easy. If you work, you'll see results guaranteed. In MLM, no matter how hard you work, you still have a ninety nine percent chance of failing. Yes, of course, bad dog, this is true. But that doesn't stop those in MLM from trying to compare the gym to their opportunity. Great example of this is my ACN video. Nathan uses that specific example. He says, you know, if somebody tells you, oh, I did ACN, it doesn't work. Yeah, well, I have a friend who joined the gym and he's still fat. Not only is this incredibly fucking just rude and low, like not classy, but it's not true. The gym actually does depend on your effort. Let's, let's continue on. Glenn is barring out right now. 
I tried to hire myself at Apple. It didn't work. So I used, so I sold pre-used iPhones in front of the store. Police came, fired myself on the spot. Hilarious. Glenn won the chess match. Peter and Scott are the pigeons knocking over all the pieces and crapping over the board like they won. So true. Glenn is a G. So we agree. <laughs> so we agree. Glenn with a capital G. No, hang on. I, we, we, we agree. You, hang on. I think it's done. I don't think there's such a thing as an MLM company that's done right. Let's just recap the last minute here. So Glenn brings up this, uh, this great example, right? Glenn brings up this great example. I'm reading your chat, your chats here. Okay. So Glenn brings up this great example of how no other companies do this type of schmoozing and telling you these, Oh, people are going to try to steal your dream. No other companies do that except MLM companies. And Peter goes, well, that's only bad MLM companies. So we agree. So we, we kind of, we agree, but disagree. You, you say it's only done bad. Sometimes I say it's done bad a hundred percent. of the time. Yep. But we hang on, but we all agree that Marco's the opening to his speech about the story about his friend is, is, spot on and it's really he, he spoke really well and explained it well there's nothing in there that he said that was factually wrong it happens every day i wouldn't call it brilliant i wouldn't call it brilliant but we agree let's move on to the next one we're run yep. so we're two for two with peter agreeing glenn you've done something my friend yeah scott agrees what's too. What's number two yeah what's, what's number two if, peace out mr there's no spoon he said that it's not direct selling which is correct Amway and MLM companies used to be direct selling. They used to go door to door and they, their focus used to be selling things to customers. Okay, now he's addressing my, the next point of my conference speech, which is that MLM is not direct selling. This is correct. That has shifted to instead of selling to customers, what you're doing is you're selling franchises and an opportunity. You're not worrying about selling the product. You're worried about selling the opportunity to somebody. You're saying, hey, I can help you become a multimillionaire. Follow me, I can help you become rich. Um, and quite simply, direct selling does not exist anymore. I mean, I can't recall the last time. I was, I was thinking last night, when was the last time a direct salesperson came to my door? And I was thinking, I've been in this house for 18 months. It hasn't happened at this house. And then I, I think it might have happened at my old house. But, but I'm, I, I'm, I don't reckon someone's come to my door to sell me a product in five years. And yet... There's supposedly millions and millions of direct sellers in Australia. It's, it's clearly a lie. It's clearly not true. Um, what we have are millions of people trying to sell a, a fake franchise or a business opportunity where they can become financially free forever. Yes. It's, it's just simply false. It's not direct selling. Marco's 100% right. It's not direct selling. Woo! Well, I view direct selling and MLM as very different from each other. With, with direct selling, there's no upline, there's no downline. Every distributor is connected directly to the company. Exactly. Go on. And Amway has never been a direct selling company. Amway has always been an MLM. Now, there may or may not have been more selling to customers going on, but that does not make Amway a, a direct selling company. That makes them an MLM with more retail sales. Um, and, and so that's really apples and oranges as far as I'm concerned. Um, they... But Scott, MLMs themselves claim to be direct selling. They are represented by the Direct Selling Association. The Direct Selling Association. Let's go to their site, scroll to the bottom, see their sponsors. Who, who funds the Direct Selling Association? Who are their sponsors for their generous support? Let's look. Let me move myself out of the way here. Let's look. We've got Amway, Arbon, New Skin, USANA. Look, some of these I haven't even fucking heard of, bro. For Life, I've heard of that one. Shackley, that's one of the oldest ones, by the way. Read Ponzionomics if you haven't. I mean, this is the direct selling association, bro. This is, this is their own shit. You know? But go on. Because it, it, it's just a, it's a completely different business model, and, and there's a lot more incentive in an MLM, as you said, Glenn, to recruit more people. And it's mainly because the products are overpriced, and you can't find customers. No, you know, people don't want to pay for overpriced products in general, and so the only people you can find that are willing to buy the 
Exactly, which applies to direct selling and MLM. Direct selling doesn't exist because you could just go to Amazon. Overpriced products are people that also want to become distributors and, and become wealthy like their upline is telling them. So, you know, to me, that's those are two very different things as far as, uh, you know, the, the pitch, so to speak. Um, Peter, what's your take on that? Well, in my world, we used to use a definition of direct sales is when you go to them. Retail sales is when they come to you. Nonsense. So Amazon would be a retail sale. Walking into a department store would be a retail sale. Walking into a nutritional center would be a retail sale. And then if a sales rep was involved call, talking to you outside of that. So if you made a phone call, sent you an email, sent you a text, knocked on your door, did a trade show, any or all those things, that would be my definition of direct sales. So I would agree with Glenn that door-to-door -door direct sales is going down. But other types of direct sales may have taken their place. So direct sales itself is still viable. Whether it's super growing or not, I'm not sure. Wrong. Um, that part I don't have the stats on. The door-to-door -door part definitely has gone down. Party plans may have gone up depending on the industry. Wrong. Um, but people still selling over the phone, through email, through text. My definition of direct sales, the salesperson going to the customer as opposed to the customer going to the salesperson, there's a lot of people still actively involved in direct sales. Nonsense. Absolutely fucking nonsense. But when you start in Amway, you're on 3%. So that means if you were, imagine you're a really great salesperson. You went and you sold $300 worth of Amway Get products. Get them, Glenn. You earned $9. Dollars. Is that not proof that it is not direct selling? Because Woo! nobody, it is. literally it nobody, is. can make a living it selling is. products. To hey, who is in here with the nickname Kip Kirby? You better tell me who that is, bro. Who is Kip Kirby? Kip Kirby is a character from my stream that it that I started doing in like 2021. I haven't done him in a while. Who's like he's like an old uh, conservative, like unintentionally racist baseball announcer from like the 40s. Who is Kip Kirby, bro? So this is so only people that don't have direct sales backgrounds use the argument that you're using. So what? only people that don't have direct direct sales backgrounds using your arguments. Here's the dirty facts about direct selling. The new guys always earn the smallest commissions because the new guys come and go. Turnover is necessary and usual in direct sales. So it's the guys that are... Oh, it's Jared. What up, Jared? Hilarious. You can't do Amway hold on, hold on. and just sell products. Hold on, Can you? Hold on you have one to second. Recruit. Hold on one second. So in direct sales, it is very common for the new guy to start off at the lower commission and based on either his sales or his accomplishments as far as recruiting, meaning produce other salesmen. Recruiting isn't a negative turn except for an MLM guy. So for recruiting, which means build your sales force, that's how you earn bigger commissions. I'll use an example. I think when I started with Electrolux, my beginning commission was 20%. And then I had to gain up to at least 10 sales. And then I think I went up to like 25 or 30%. And then when I hit, I don't remember the number, they gave me back the difference. They, like, for instance, if I hit 50 sales, this is wrong numbers. So I don't remember the numbers because now we're talking about 30 some odd years ago. So if I hit, say, 30 sales, not only did I get the higher commission, but they paid me back the commissions that I didn't earn. So the difference between the 20 and 30, the 25 and 30 and stuff like that, they gave me an incentive for sticking around and make sure I hit the 30. In the encyclopedia business, same thing. New guy started off with the, with the smallest commission. Encyclopedia business, going door to door, selling encyclopedias, bro. Make it make sense. Again, we don't have those anymore because we have Google. You don't need an encyclopedia. You have a phone in your pocket that can look up any word ever. Direct sales does not exist. After your 10th sale, you get bumped up a commission. After your 50th sale, you get bumped up a commission. So the new guys always, always in the direct sales business model, I shouldn't say always, lots of times in the direct sales business model, start off at a smaller commission. And only Not people that are – what's that? Not 3%. Amway starts at 3%. What up, Jose? They start at 3%. 3%. 
outrageous. If they, if they get people to start agency, off at three, we're... if they get people to start off with three, you're absolutely right. That's the reason why I quit Amway three times, Glenn. So we're in agreement there. That's the reason why I quit. I said I can't figure out how you guys make any money here. I need to make. When I was thinking about transitioning out from Electrolux to anything else, I needed to have a two hundred thousand dollar a year lifestyle. So that's where I was. Bullshit. Two hundred thousand a year, and I could. I looked at that Amway compensation plan, and I said, "How the hell with this shitty plan does anybody ever? How can they ever? I mean, you have to move truckloads of stuff. I mean, mountain loads of stuff to be able to get to two hundred thousand dollars in a yearly." And yet you joined three times. Answer the question, Peter, on the next episode. You have to answer this on Saturday. If that was what you thought, then why the fuck, how the fuck did you join three times? You are really that stupid. Damn, you surprised me with how stupid you are. Based on the commissions from the sales, this sucks. That's why I quit three times. And when I found out that most of the massive profit was made on the tools. On the that would, uh, I don't, I can't, comp I can't promise that I'm coming down to Calgary for the stampede. But uh, I can promise I'll be going to see Nickelback. In the backs of the newer people, that's why I left. So you and I are, are, are in agreement with direct sales and small commissions, but lots of direct sales companies do that. So that's not necessarily the sign of a bad, a bad company. It's a common practice. If you take a look at those insurance guys, those insurance guys pay. This is the argument he had against WFG. Those insurance guys make a little bit of money, number one, because in insurance, you get advanced commissions, which is worse, meaning when the customer cancels, you owe it back. I agree with that, by the way, uh, Peter. I will agree with you on that, sir. Uh, advanced commissions, like in the case of a WFG, Primerica, PHP, are worse because let's say you sell an insurance policy that's worth $1,000, meaning they're going to pay however much per month for 12 months, the total being uh, $1,000, let's say $1,200, so it's easy, $100 a month, right? If they cancel that policy before it renews, you got paid $1,000 or $1,200 up front for making the sale. So let's say you made the sale on January 1, but then they canceled it on June 25. Now you owe back that $1,200. Chances are you've probably already spent it. So those are worse. I'll give you that. So a, a manager has to owe back whatever the new guy got paid and quit. So it's worse than a cancellation. It's not only did I get a cancellation, I have to pay back the commissions I didn't even get if you're the branch manager. So that's just the business model behind direct sales. Sorry, Enpaz, right. I should have said ma'am when referring to Peter, not sir, because uh, she did say that she was part of the uh, some women's selling group. So my, my mistake. Apologies. Peter, didn't mean to offend you, miss. Sales and direct sales management that every MLM or every anti-MLM person that I've spoken to or listened to has no clue. They have no clue. But if you talk to a direct sales manager, like I listen to one of Marco's guys. Great point, Len Lenz. Uh, usually when a company fires you or you quit, they wouldn't want you back. <laughs> Great point. Depends if you quit but leave on good terms. Yeah, but three times though? Trying to explain this, but he didn't realize how stupid Marco was. So he wasn't able to get to that point where Marco, you don't understand. This isn't just insurance. This is direct sales. You think it's shitty commissions. This is the way the direct sales industry treats their new people. And it doesn't treat their new people this way because they don't like new people. They love new people. They recruit new people. They want their new people to succeed. They want their, sales, their new people to sell a shitload of stuff. But their new people quit for tons of reasons, having nothing to do with anything. New people quit. And as a result of that, if we're on the hook for their commissions or we're on the hook for the advertising or we're on the hook for all the expenses that we have to put in while we're working with somebody that quit and all that lost cost, that's why we don't pay the new guy as much. They have to stick around so they can earn it. So that's your number two. We talked about direct sales and the idea that you've never seen a direct sale. I, I, I want to make, a, point, a, point. Yeah, I make a final point about that. Direct sales is directly selling stuff to the public. Amway does not do that. My dad has never in 23 years even attempted to do that. Right, um, so don't get on Amway. Let's talk I, about but, but, so, so, but the reason why, why he hasn't done that is because the company deliberately does not incentivize him to do that. The company incentivizes Agreed. him to convince people that he can make them multi-millionaires. If he sells them a franchise. By, by transfer buying. And, buy from yourself. And, and the commission, the commission is, is obscene. I mean, 3%. Ferrari salesmen. People that sell Ferraris get more than 3%. Real, Great point, Glenn. Realtors or real estate agents, as we call them here, they make more than 3%. Selling Great point, Glenn. Even the hardest, most difficult stuff to sell, most expensive high-ticket items, Ferraris, houses, those salespeople, realtors, car salesmen, make a higher commission than 3%. But Amway, you're going to pay me 3% for selling soap?
You're going to pay me 3% on an item that costs 30, 40 bucks? Think about it. Like a million dollar house. Correct. It, it's lunacy. 3% on LOC and toothpaste. It's beyond non-typical. Yes. So how do you make a shitty compensation plan attractive enough for millions of people to join? You wrap it around a tool scam. No. You lie and tell them that this is the key to the, to the multi-million dollar life-changing opportunity. And then the tool scam comes in after. So you, you yeah. do all the things that... You wrap all the things that we agree upon. Okay. So what's point number three? Cause I might literally go and eat some McDonald's after this, just in honor of all the MLM people who think that the only jobs that exist are MLM and McDonald's. I don't want to run out of time. I know we're going to go over. And I, yeah. I, I set this up for an hour, but don't get disconnected because you won't be able to call back in. But I know we're going to go over an hour. But go for number three. We might have to have you come back. So this is a good, lively okay. conversation. At every single Amway meeting, they say the same thing. Anyone can do it. Well, that's not true. And you, you would know, you, you were a salesman. Being a salesman is a skill. It's a complex skill. Not everyone has that skill. Not everyone has the ability to learn that skill, to conf the self-confidence and the, to, you know, to approach people, to, to approach somebody and say, I can help you become a multimillionaire part-time. That's, that's incredibly skillful. And there's an incredibly small percentage of the population that actually has that, that skill. Some people, it doesn't, you could get them the greatest salesperson on planet Earth and they would not be able to learn that skill. So when Marco right. says that, what he says about that is he's absolutely spot on again. Okay, so you're, you're, we let you do your six so far, so you're picking three that we would all agree yep. with. So what's the next one? So we, we agree with basically the first three, um, and then the, the, uh, the definition well, we, of... Damn, spot on so far. Let's go. I agree, uh, that, it's so, yeah. I agree that it's sold wrong. The idea that you say yeah. everybody can do it was never the way that we recruited people in my businesses, mm -hmm. but it's the way that a lot of MLM people do it. Everybody can do it. All you do is get two, get two, but get two. Or like Marco says, get five, or get five, or get five. But we'll talk yeah, about but, that But, but well. I think Marco did a very good job of actually explaining that. Um, he also talks about the mindset training. Now, my, and he says that mindset training is endless. So All roads lead to the tool scam. Yeah, somebody create a flow chart where it's like you, every, every one of the pathways <laughs> leads to the tool scam. That's what's great about the company's point of view, the mindset training is because when someone fails, you just say, well, your mindset's not right yet. And they're thinking, well, I bought 150 tapes over a five year period. Oh, you gotta buy more tapes. You gotta, you gotta go to more functions. Um, I, I remember my father, um, there was a function on in Melbourne that cost $230. This is in 2001. And his view was that this was gonna be a life changing night. This was a $230 investment in himself. And this was gonna change his whole damn life didn't change his life. And then a couple of months later, he was going to another expensive function. And that one was going to change his whole life. So yeah, when Marco talks about the, the mindset training, it's a good con because it's endless. It's very hard to just prove that it didn't work. You can just say, well, the person didn't listen, didn't pay attention. Um, it's, it's a classic. It's a beautiful com common, theme, common theme in the self-development industry. The book that you didn't read is the one that you have to, you know, the one that you missed. You know, you got to come to the next invention. Uh, Tony Robbins, you got to be at the next level. They're always selling the next event when the last event is almost over. So I agree with you. So again, I mean, you, picked, I mean, I, Glenn, you picked four easy ones that you knew we would agree with. We are going to have to have you come back, and we're going to have to go over our list, but what's number five? Well, it's more than y'all have covered in two months since the fucking conference speech has been out. Posio? Uh, they talk about the fact that everything is about to collapse. Um, I remember in 2001, Amway in Australia was saying that in 20 years' time, there's not going to be pensions. The government can't afford pensions. We've got an aging population. There's going to be no pensions. Well, here we are, 23 years later. There's still pensions. Exactly. Great point, Glenn. Another great point by Glenn. In my new video, you are going to see uh, one of the top recruiters in this company who's been in it for 35 years. He has YouTube videos that were released in 2009. He has YouTube videos that came out in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. And in each of them, you know, in 09, in 09, he was saying now is the time because the economy just crashed, people are getting laid off, people are uncertain and anxious and they need help, they need hope. Let's be the neighborhood hope dealer instead of the neighborhood dope dealer. Literally, he says that. And uh, time to get in business for yourself. Let me put you in business. Well, he was fear-mongering on the economic situation of 2009. Fast forward to 2020 and he's talking about how he just had his greatest month ever in April of 2020 the month following the lockdowns because people are losing their jobs. Now is the time to join. 11 years later, now is the time to join because there's more uncertainty and whatever and whatever and whatever. And fast forward, this just continues on and on. They will always find a reason to sell you the, you know, this is called artificial scarcity. Get it now. The opportunity is going to pass you by. 
And yet this guy has been in it 35 years using the exact same verbiage and tactics. So great point, Glenn. They're always saying the share market's going to collapse. It hasn't collapsed in Australia. The housing market's going to collapse. They were saying this 23 years ago. The housing market's never been higher. Everything's always about to collapse, and it never does, but they keep saying it. Today, I, I got in an argument with my father about two months ago. Um, here in Australia, interest rates are going up, and his dad's gone, they told me this was going to happen. They told me the interest rates were going to rise, and they told me that the house prices were going to fall. And I said, hang on, you were saying that to me in 2001. And then he called me a negative dickhead and hung up the phone. <laughs> oh, that sucks. You know, like, but this is the sort of... Marco he's never brainwashed. Right he's he's um, never brainwashed. He's not like brainwashing. It, Absolutely. Yeah, wrong thinking. I agree. It, it's always... I, um, everything's going to collapse. I get it. We get it. We agree. Always, we agree. Yeah. You pick five easy ones. Go ahead. Did you just shh your guest? You're a 60-year-old man, you fucking bitch. Have some respect. Shh. You're a professional on a radio show going, shh. Grow a fucking pair of nuts, Peter. Peter, I would literally slap you, bro. Straight up. I would slap you. Silly. I would wash your mouth out with soap and spank you on the bum like my like you were my son, bro. Hey, where's the six easy one? We're gonna Scott. Uh, uh, Scott, we have to have him come back. Howdy, Specs. <laughs> I was gonna make another point. They're always saying. The, uh, the MLM, MLM industry is about to explode. And actually, when I, when I got in, I, they didn't call it Amway, Amway in Australia in the early 2000s. They used to call it A2K. Have you guys heard that before, A2K? No. Yeah. So when you were prospecting people, you would call it A2K, and you would tell it like it was a new business, a brand new business, and you got to get in on the, on the ground floor. And they were talking about A2K, which was Amway, as if it was like Google. If, if you don't act quickly, you're going to miss it. A2K. If you Google A2K, this is really interesting. Wow, there's an Amway wiki. If you Google A2K, the second page that you get, the second result is log into Amway, Amway Australia. Again, just another funnel. This is typical of MLM industry. Um, but, you know, they're always changing definitions and they're always changing the names. You know, over there, they called it um, Quick Start. Yep, Quick Start. But, you know, I mean, the thing about Amway is it never, ever changes. Stories change, you know, their story changes, their doomsday predictions change, but it, it, it hasn't changed in 50 years, really. Um, and then, no again, so I mean, I'm, 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 I'm perplexed because you guys are talking about how terrible Marco's speech was, and yet I've just listed a heap of things that he said, and we all, we all agree on it. Get them Glenn. Um, Marco talked about, another thing he talked about was the, the, pon the MLM is just a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. Um, I know Scott has said that on his radio show many a time, and he's spot on. Do you agree with that, Peter? No. That's, a, no. that's, that's not an accurate statement, and he would have to defend what he means by that. Has, has Scott said that? I've heard that's Scott say a, that. Or am I... That's just a, I don't know if Scott said that. I've heard Marco say that. But I think that's like, yeah. that's like a statement that's made that needs an explanation. Like, what the hell are you talking about? You better explain that, pal, because I don't think you know what you're talking about. Good thing I did explain it in my conference speech, Peter. I didn't just say it as an isolated statement and then fuck off. I actually explained it. Maybe you should go watch my speech again. It's been two months. So, so, so it's like one of those cliches that people say, you know, like, oh, the tough, you know, the tough get going and or whatever, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. That's like one of those statements that people say without thinking. No, it's not. So he'd yeah. have to sit here and explain that. I so will. So how would you explain that? How could it be a Ponzi scheme with multiple steps? Well, a Ponzi scheme is really simple. You give me $100, I'll give you $200. With Amway, it's, you give me, um, it's, it's the, same, the same structure, but there's lots of extra steps. You've got, to, you've got to go out and you've got to get training first. And then you've got to go to functions, and then you've got to prospect people. Um, so it's it's the same business structure, but there's a lot of extra steps, and that, that gives them more scope for saying you you didn't do it right, you made an error. Whereas yes. if it's just a flat out, you give me a hundred, I'll give you two hundred. You can't blame the person for that. Exactly, exactly. In a Ponzi scheme, somebody tells you you give me a hundred bucks, I'll bring you a return of two hundred bucks in ninety days or whatever. All you have to do is give your money and then sit there and wait. Maybe they go fuck off with the money leave the country, maybe they bring you a return. Maybe you reinvest it and get a return a few times over before it collapses. Maybe you get extra returns by recruiting some more people into the scheme. But generally, if you wanted to invest in a Ponzi scheme, the requirement is that you give your money to the you know, organizer and then you wait. In MLM, you don't just give them your money. You give them your money and now they give you a starter kit or some you know, thing to sell that is usually very expensive, whether it's insurance, protein powder, shampoo, whatever it is, expensive either as a general truth 
or expensive in relation to other products that are already readily available for people on Amazon, at Walmart, Target, etc., making it virtually impossible to sell them. So now they tell you, you are an independent distributor. Now, if you want to turn your $100 into $200, you have to go and make sales and recruit other people and blah, blah, blah. That way, when you fail, you're not going to go to the upline who recruited you and say, hey, what the fuck have you roped me into? This was a scam. Instead, which by the way, you could do that with a Ponzi scheme. You could go, hey, I gave you a hundred bucks. You, you promised me not, uh, 200 bucks within 90 days. It's been 90 days, 90 days. Where the fuck is my money? Give me my money. And then you might throw hands right there. With MLM, your upline can literally look at you in the face and smile in broad daylight and go, look at my car, look at my life. The system obviously works, so must have been something you did. And there's no recourse. So it is an even bigger scam than a Ponzi scheme. So explain to me, Ponzi schemes are illegal, MLM is not. Make that make sense. So, so to me, MLM is a very, very sophisticated version of a Ponzi scheme. The Ponzi scheme is very simplistic, very easy to figure out. This is massively more complex. And so there's a, there's, a couple, there's a couple of things. So I'll let you answer the way Marco would answer. So yeah. a lot of people, so i got to tell you this, a lot of people, including myself, for most of my career, would have not been able to explain the difference between a pyramid and a Ponzi scheme. So most people, including myself, until I started doing this kind of stuff, like running my own company and all that sort of stuff. So most people, including myself, would have gotten the definition to what's, what is a Ponzi scheme and what is a pyramid scheme wrong. So I'm throwing myself in that pile. So, and Paz knows the old references about Ann Moll's car. So true. So if there's 100 people listening in and you're all not experts, most of us would probably get it wrong. So what do you think Marco's definition of a pyramid versus Marco's definition of a Ponzi scheme is? Before Glenn answers, I'll tell you. My definition of an MLM is a made up term for a pyramid scheme. My definition of a pyramid scheme is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. Do you see the common thread here? They are all the same thing to a different degree. And I'll say this in the most simplistic way possible and I think Marco would nod his head um, in agreement. Basically all the revenue in a Ponzi scheme comes from Ponzi scheme investors. In an MLM, all the revenue is coming from MLM participants, all the re Amway, re whatever revenue Amway's got, 99 point something percent of it is coming from Amway IBOs. So it's the same thing. In a Ponzi scheme, the revenue is coming from the people in the Ponzi scheme, trying to sell the Ponzi scheme. And in an MLM, all the revenue is coming from the people in it. All the Amway revenue is coming from Amway IBOs, distributors, whatever the hell you want to call Correct. them. Correct. So that the revenue is all coming from the same place and it's all coming to this closed loop circuit. Now, to me, any business that doesn't have outside consumption, which is what Scott talks about a lot, retail sales, it's a sophisticated Ponzi scheme. Amway, to me, is a very, very sophisticated Ponzi scheme. And if the man so, was better... Do you, do you mean... I'm going to ask you to think your yeah. question through. Yeah. Wouldn't you really mean... And I'm not putting words in your mouth. I just want you to think it through. Amway would not be a sophisticated Ponzi scheme. It would be a sophisticated pyramid scheme. Correct. Not so, a Ponzi. Same thing to me. Ponzi and pyramids, I mean, to me, a pyramid scheme or an MLM is just a sophisticated version of a Ponzi scheme. Okay, it's, so it's, just... it's more sophisticated. Correct. So okay, here's... I've, been, I've been back for a couple of minutes, Peter, if I could interject real quick. Sure. But what, I just so, want to say this, Scott. Yeah, I know you were going... great. Also a great point as well, Paz. A Ponzi scheme doesn't have a tool scam. This is true. This is another reason why MLMs are even bigger scams than Ponzi schemes. Ponzi scheme, once again, you give me 100 bucks, wait 90 days, I, I bring you back 200 bucks, 100% return. Well, with MLM, I'm going to sell you this impossible, you know, this starter kit or whatever with the impossible task of you going and making a living, either from making 3% commission or whatever it is off of a shampoo or 25% commission off of a, an expensive insurance policy, which is an advanced commission that they might charge back on anyways. You know, you're never going to make money from this. Or you can also try to recruit people into the scheme to put their money up and, uh, you know, you'll get, you know, sell the opportunity, recruit more people, unlock higher commissions, sell them the product, blah, 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 blah. They buy the starter kit through you. Well, because of their cycle of failure that they're inevitably going to be on, now is where you can, they're even more vulnerable. Now sell them the book, sell them the, you know, Obviously, tapes aren't a thing anymore, but sell them the events, sell them the webinars, the private webinars with only, I only have 50 seats in this webinar. It's like, why? 
what, it's virtual. What do you mean there's seats? What do you mean it's limited? Well, you know, artificial scarcity. Again, you can't miss this. It's going to be life changing. So, yeah, it is a more sophisticated Ponzi scheme. I threw myself under the bus as well. I, I was yeah. in this industry for a really long time um, at high levels, at a really long time, high income levels at a really long time. And when called to task, like, tell me the difference between a pyramid and a Ponzi, I would have gotten it wrong. I would have thought I had it right, but as I started to explain it away and really start to think about it, I would have realized that maybe my definitions need to be clarified. Peter, I want to actually truthfully say this from my heart. You are the stupidest person I have ever like experienced in my entire life. And I, I'm, I'm being genuine with you. I'm not saying that like to insult you. Genuinely, 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 I don't know how you manage to wake up in the morning and put your left leg in the left pant leg and your right leg in the right pant leg, but you are truly the stupidest, most logically bankrupt person I have ever witnessed in my entire life. And that is a fact. And I, I give you that from my heart. So, uh, so I just wanted to say that just in case you missed it when you were off. So by the way, so some of the yeah. people listening in, Scott had to take a separate call and he might've been gone for a while. So if he was not interrupting me, <laughs> it was because he was probably on the line. So go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I've been here for a couple minutes. So I have heard the, the last of the discussion. So to me, the difference between a Ponzi and a pyramid, first of all, a Ponzi is usually something that you are passively invested in. You know, it's, hey, buy my stock, I'll give you a return, uh, but the returns are not real. The records are fake. And when you want to get money, early on you can get money because new investors' money is used to pay for your made-up profits. And so the whole thing is, you know, just a big illusion, basically, a Ponzi. Um, and, and it's passive. And it's also pretty much single level, right? There's one guy or one, one very small group of people, like with Madoff, very small group of people who know what's going on. The rest of them are investors, and a lot of them are extremely wealthy investors, and you would think they were smart investors, um, but they got fooled because, you know, people like Madoff are very well respected, it was. Um, and, and so, and he also sort of did another baiting thing, like we were talking about with, you know, with MLM and, and telling you that someone's going to say this is not a good deal, and, and then it's bias confirmation. Well, what Madoff did was when people, um, said that they wanted to invest, he would decline them, even though they were, you know, plenty wealthy, they had plenty of money, and he, he played hard to get. He played hard to be invested with, and that just gave an extra illusion of, this is really special. I mean, this guy is really good. You know, this must be a great investment, because he's not taking new money. And, and so, it's a similar line, but it's different. Can I say one thing? Yep. This is what Amway is now doing. That They say, I'm working with some millionaires, some millionaire mentors. I'm not sure if you'll qualify, but I will put in a good word for you. That is now what Amway does. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to see a guy in my new video who gives an example. He tells a story about him using a high-pressure sales tactic to sell an insurance policy to someone. And he tells them, uh, okay, let's go ahead and get that money for you. Get that money. Get that application signed up with you right now. And they, you know, he's, he's playing both characters in the story. He goes, oh, well, how much is that going to cost me today? Oh, $164, whatever. Oh, no, I don't have that. Oh, okay, well, let's call somebody who does have it. Oh, well, can I do it next week when I get my check? Well, I might not want to work with you next week. I might be wealthy as all hell next week, and I might not even want to work with you. Again, artificial scarcity. It's just like blink and you'll miss it. Lies. Absolutely. Now, so that's a, that's a Ponzi, right? All yeah, well, hold on. We, we call that and technique, that, Glenn, we, we call that technique kind of like posturing. So posturing is the technique where they do the edification and they make it hard to get and all that sort of stuff. Like, I'll put in a good word for you. I don't know if you qualify, blah, blah, blah. That's a push-pull technique that a lot of people might call posturing. So for those people who are familiar, if you want to put a label on it, that's what it is. So get, go back to you, well, Scott. My, my label would be, I'd call that lying. The, the, yeah, the no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Lying. Keep it simple for these idiots. It's not posturing. It's lying. It's also posturing, but it's lying. Absolutely, absolutely. Minutes. Kind of faking. It's like when you go into the car dealership and the guy says, I don't know if I can uh, ask my manager to give you that, you know, the spoke wheels instead, you know, would you take it? And then he gets up and goes to the coffee machine. The manager talks shit and then he comes back. He says, oh, he's running a real tough drive. He's going to cost you a hundred bucks, but he said he would do it. That's uh, sales techniques, if you will. And um, that's a universally, you know, sometimes manipulative practice. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, it's MLM and non MLM, no doubt. So, so here's the difference between an MLM and a Ponzi. MLM, you're active, right? You're actively building a business. Now, it is true that only the people towards the top know what's really going on, but it's a larger group than a Ponzi. Um, but it, but it, it's still 
a situation where the people at the top know what's going on and, and most of the downline do not know. But it's an active business. You're out there building your own business, and, and it, it takes activity. You know, you have to train people. It's not you put some money in and you sit back and wait for a return. So that's where I don't agree with Marco when he says uh, that an LM is a Ponzi with extra steps because it's vastly different. Um, I haven't heard just, you say that before. Ponzi scheme is – I thought I heard you – maybe I'm, I'm incorrect. I've watched so much MLM stuff that I've – I thought you said that. It's a, a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. Or like no, that's Marco. I, I've never said that. That's Marco. Okay. I guarantee you if we went and found, looked, because I don't believe Glenn is lying. Glenn says he's heard Scott say that before. I bet you if he dug, he could find uh, Scott saying that and putting his foot in his mouth. Yeah, so for those, that. We have, I know we have new people listening in, and we're almost done, but for a real-world definition that's somewhat controversial, in the United States, we have something called Social Security. And Social Security oh my God, is no a way. Ponzi scheme. So when it was first designed, there was one old guy and 10 young workers. And the 10 young workers... Was, were providing a portion of their checks to pay for the one old guy. And whether it's 10 to 1 or 35 to 1 or whatever the number was, depends on what year you're going to start to reference. So a Ponzi scheme is when new investors' monies pay old promises. Because you promise the old guy, you're going to be able to retire. But wait a minute. Is he literally talking about like the way Canada has free health care, the way like we all pay in our taxes? to keep the medical system afloat. That way, in case people get sick or injured, they can be cared for for free. Is he, is he, is that what he's talking about? A saying, cause I'm not, I, you know, I live in Canada. So is that, is he saying that like that is a Ponzi scheme? Social security, P taxpayer dollars going to help those in need. I just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. So the 10 new guys were contributing to make sure that one guy was there. Well, the reason why it's a Ponzi scheme is because now the numbers are maybe one out of two. There's one old guy, and there's two new guys. There's not enough new guys to pay for the old promises. So that's kind of like a Ponzi. So Social Security in the United States is a Ponzi. I don't know what it might be in Canada. But you don't have enough new people to be able to— Oh, that's our pension plan. Okay, so he's wrong. —support the old promises that you are making. That's why I say, Glenn, how is Amway a Ponzi? It's really not a Ponzi. You can just debate oh, so, so What you just said about but the social security system, I said before how Amway in 2001 said in 20 years' time there was going to be no pensions. And the reason they gave is exactly word for word what you just said. They said in 20 years' time, so 2021, two years ago, there's going to be no pensions in Australia. Therefore, you'd better grow an MLM business now or you're going to be homeless because you're not going to get a pension off the government. Now, right. that hasn't happened in Australia. There's still pensions in Australia. But what you just said, you've left out one very, very important thing about an aging population is immigration. At any point in time, the government can let in as many immigrants as they want. We've got a population here of 26 million. If the government wanted to tomorrow, they could let in another 15 million people and they could make them all working age. So this idea that we're going to run out of workers and there's not going to be enough, enough taxpayers, that's complete rot because the government is in complete control of the population. We've got 26 million here. If the government wanted to, they could make it 75 million. They literally, or they could, they could have no immigration for 20 years and then our population would shrink. So the government has complete control over whether to grow our population or whether to shrink our population. So this, this scare tactic of there's not going to be pensions because there's not going to be enough workers to pay for them is completely wrong. So I guess this wouldn't make Peter a communist, right? It would, it would sort of be the opposite. I don't even know the word for that sort of think, way of thinking. Right. Well, that would be the, in, reference to your, in reference to your story, that would be the government controlling the Ponzi. So let's go back to um, pyramids. But, but that, Amway was wrong when I said there's going to be no pension oh, yeah. in 20 years. Amway's wrong with it. Amway, uh, I shouldn't say Amway's wrong. Amway upline or Amway leadership is wrong because we don't know. I don't think Amway's going to sit there and say those things. So Amway leadership, the person at the microphone is an Amway. He's the Amway leader. Or the Amway. 20, people. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So were, yeah. were you done with your six? Uh, the, yeah, dude. I think I've enjoyed these episodes with Glenn so much because it highlights how immature and stupid Scott and Peter are when they are juxtaposed against someone who is actually smart and well-spoken like Glenn. They just keep floundering. Normally, they're, you know, Scott and Peter are having a good time, giggling, laughing, saying Marco is so stupid. Here, they have no choice but to agree with Glenn, who is just simply reiterating my own points, by the way. And they're trying to zoom past all the stuff that they realize makes them look like what they are, which is dumb. Um, I'm actually waiting for you guys to tell me what he said that was wrong. Oh, well, we so have far, to, we, we went, 
I think Scott. First of all, I only had an hour for this show. Yeah, so I feel like I've gone through almost everything you said, and you guys have have, have, have almost agreed with we, we, we took your six. We took yeah. your six. So, yeah, so like, what, what, what did you say wrong? Scott, I think we're gonna have to have him come back because we have like we could go on for like probably another three weeks. Dude, you he glenned him. You just got glenned, Scott and Peter. But I wanted to give you the ability to discuss what you thought was brilliant. So we'll give you an opportunity yeah. to kind of discuss the things that we probably think are less than that. So yeah, no, Scott, I, think, I, think I, I think I missed a couple of them. So what I'll do is listen to the show. And when we get back next week, if, if you're available, Glenn, we'll do it one week from now. I'll make any comments that you made of your sex that I did not hear. And then yeah. we'll continue with oh my, my take on Marco and his presentation. And we'll go right down the list. Uh, you know, I sent you that email. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but um, that's, that's the full list of notes that I took after watching uh, Marco's presentation. Um, so, yeah, I think we can wrap it for now so, and meet in a week. I that can I just finish with, with something there, guys? Um, yes, I'm just now having a look at your, your channel, um, Scott. You've got some really, really good stuff on here. The Andy Andrews um, Quickstar video. It's an absolute tragedy that so few people have seen it. Uh, Two and a half thousand people have seen it. This, is, this really lists the lead on the Amway Tool Scam. It's a tragedy that so few people have watched, have watched this. That's why I'm so I'm literally desperate for you guys to debate Marco or to at least at least let me moderate it. Get that on your channel. Go ahead, Glenn. Bring in the back the main issue that the people want to see. Uh, Silica Valley says Scott and Peter are shitty little small dogs, shaking, shitting, and barking, ankle biting behavior. Scott and Peter are those little white dogs with like the the scruffy hair and the little eye boogers. That's them. Your channel. I mean, your channel's only got seventy three sorry seventy subs. The content on your channel deserves thousands of subs. So, Ooh, he's egging him on by stroking his ego. Yeah, I really like this. Let's listen. But Mark, I channel. grow the channel on my YouTube channel. Yeah, okay. oh. and I agree. I think, well, when I, I think when between I the, like, you, you, if you guys anyway, so debate this. Marco, you have that. We're not going to debate Marco. Marco. Marco's a pathological liar. That's the reason why we're talking to you as opposed to him. Because we can then expose me. Then, then debate me, and you'll be able to point out my lies. You can prepare, have examples, and go on. I have a logical conversation with you. We can't with Marco. Marco manipulates the truth. He doesn't know how to tell the truth. He constantly does it all the time. I'm not talking to Marco. So I'll talk to you. you talk get more subscribers. So here, I'm not worried about more subscribers. We're, 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 our our goals are not necessarily the same as Marco's goals. Marco thinks that the number of subscribers that pay him point zero 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 pennies uh, are the things that make him successful. Um, it's not it's not how we judge success. So what we should do, Scott, is we'll but have him come back. Success? But do you, but not yet. But because we're running out of time, and I got I have another radio show that I have to make time for. That's the only reason why I have to cut this one shorter than. So I have another radio show that I need to. I have another scam that I need to get paid for. So we gotta wrap this up. Time we did this. Um, but Scott, do you want to rattle off a couple of the points that we can talk about, so the listening audience will know, and just like you know, like, like bullet points, like rapid fire, and this say this is the things we're gonna talk about on the next one, and then we'll give um, Glenn that list, and we'll be able to do this and wrap up the show. Well, Glenn's got the list. Um, I'll rattle off the first three, I guess, just to sure. give people a taste of things, right? That's what you wanted. Um, yep, that's it. So I also, I also noted the, the high school friend. Well, this is the friend that he cheated off of his math test. Marco cheated off of this friend's math test in high school. So that just goes to character. Uh, the next one, um, well, I, I, he did I, make I, I cheated a couple of times in school. You can't hold that against me. I didn't mention Glenn. I just mentioned Marco. Um, but I, I think a lot of kids cheated once or twice in school. You can't. That doesn't make him bad. Glenn, you are my boy. Bad person. I'm well, that together. No, that, hold that on. Together. Hold on one second. We're not debating. That's that's what we'll talk about next week. I want this guy to yeah. rattle them off. There you go. So the the people listening in could say that we have that, like we just didn't stonewall Glenn. So we listened Good. to your six. So Scott rattle off like five, but go fast. Like go fast without okay. any explanations. Yeah, he, he said he doesn't know what a pyramid scheme is. He doesn't know what a legitimate MLM is. Um, he, he uses various words, uh, alternate words for MLM as if they were brand new. They've been around for decades. <laughs> um, I'll stop there. There's, there's, there's many, many more. And, and we'll get into I mean, it next week. But nobody makes any sales yeah. and, and nobody makes any money selling anything. Glenn bodies them with every one of the topics he brought up. They were forced. They had no choice but to agree because they knew 
Glenn was right when they were faced with a greater logic. And all they contributed when, when the floor was open to them, namely Scott, Marco cheated on his math test in high school. Insane. In direct sales. Direct sales is dead. Um, you could buy all your products from Amazon. I mean, those types of issues are the ones we're going to discuss. So, so Glenn, it was nice to hear right. your softball fix. <laughs> but, hey, hey, but we're going to come back. Well, can I just, I just, I just want to leave you guys yes, with what I think of course. to be the definition of success of when it comes to MLM, being an anti-MLM or you know, the bunker. That is to get as many people as you possibly can to view you and listen to you. And the way that you guys are going to increase from 70 subscribers to thousands of subscribers is to debate Marco and stick it on your channel. Yes. Then you will get thousands of subscribers and thousands of people are going to hear what Scott has to say about the Amway tool scam. And I'm <laughs> desperate for people to learn more about the Amway tool scam. And Scott has got extreme, an extremely good knowledge. Glenn, you are a sly, silver-tongued, devilish dog, you are. <laughs> the, way, the way he is like a pe stroking their ego and trying to goad them. Oh, dude, it's so clever. I love it. Glenn, yes, you are the best. Of the tool scam. So it's a tragedy that he's only got 70 subscribers. We need to get more people listening to Scott about Dexter Yeager. <laughs> Oh, Scott is so bricked getting all these compliments. And Pat says, Peter is so eager to get off this call. His ass is sore from getting spanked by Glenn for the last hour. <laughs> oh, goodness. Pussy. About, and about the horrendous Amway tool scam. And the way to do it is to debate Marco. So please, just think about it, guys. Please. Think about debating it. Please. We'll be back. So we're done. So thanks, guys, for listening in. We'll figure out when we're going to be able to have Glenn back. Glenn, thanks for being here. You're a great sport. And um, Thank we'll you speak very much. to everybody next time. Thanks, guys. You've been Goodbye. listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday oh, at 5 p.m. Eastern that again. Time for the designated Building Fortunes. The horrendous Amway tool scam. And the way to do it is to debate Marco. So please, just think about it, guys. Please. Think about debating it. Please. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. Oh, God, his ass. Glenn? This cult salutes you, Glenn. Glenn, 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 Glenn. Wow. There's a Drake song called When to Say When? Huh. When to Say Glenn. <laughs> Crazy. Calling him a great sport like they won. Insane. He cut him off so chicken. Ran off his own show. He ran him out of town like the goddamn sheriff. This is my role play of Glenn. Ready? Got his ass. Got his ass. Spanked. Peter tapped out. I'm so I'd be so embarrassed. You're two grown men. Took a hit off the Glenn. I'm sweating. Woo! Glenn for president. All for Glenn and Glenn for all. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, bro. Boys to Glenn, <laughs> the name of my new boy band. Boys to Glenn, crazy shit. All right, y'all. Well, that was fucking amazing. Um, if you guys want to go hang out in Discord voice chat, there is sound effects in there now. If you use the, there's a, there's a feature that they've added in there called uh, called soundboard actually and uh you can you can use some of the sound effects that i use on on the stream here that was absolutely insane. glentanamo bay <laughs> wake up glendum <laughs> it's morbid time but the glen whatever the glen version of that is body bagged Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in Discord. Maybe I'll even pop in Discord uh, voice chat for a bit. 
when Marco mentioned Nickelback, this is all I could see in my mind. Hilarious. You guys, the memes you guys make in Discord that are related to like Building Fortunes Radio and shit. Amazing. I'm, I just put the Discord link in the description one last time. <laughs> yeah. And Paz, Peter's bum spanked. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, guys. Join the Discord. I'll see you in there. Don't do drugs. Peace out. Let me hit that Marco. 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 <laughs> I got to get the bag. You like me? <laughs> Peace out, y'all. See you on Friday.